Hello, you're watching Force 13's Open Mic on Force 13 Live. We've got plenty of action coming up very soon. But first of all, my name's Nathan Foy, and I'm going to leave you with the team right now. And from David over here on the east coast of Australia, good to be back. And it's going to be a very interesting period. Yeah, no, Craig, sure. how are you? I am, ooh, looks like we could have a Typhoon Mellor very soon. I'm doing very well, David. Hey, uh, let me just try to get confirmation of that here. I think we may just have a Typhoon at Mellor. Let me do it here. Heading, heading through the Philippines. Still tropical Storm Mellor. Well, I think this lot need witch slapped in the face and tell them to wake up. Oh, and also yeah, we could see days, the southern. And also we could see the southern hemisphere really waking up. Yes, it's the ISS. Um... Uh, it's still a tropical storm in there. Very, very sadly. Yeah, it's only forecast to come back out one and die. Yeah, but it's that by the looks of that when it's come up to Eve. 55 knots, I think we could see a Category 2 come out of that. Ah, uh, they come up, but they go strong is what they're saying. Yes. The thing is though, is that I could definitely see a... Well, if it's a Typhoon now, you could possibly see a Cat 3 landfall. Well, depends if that yeah. shiver at JTWC notices it. Yeah. Because it's all in that time, really. Which they probably will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if that's not picked up and that's just classified as a miserable tropical storm, then, you know, I hope it doesn't. I don't want it to hit the Philippines, obviously. Oh no! Because they. So, uh, what? What, Nathan? The worst thing in my life say... has just happened. No, Oops. what? Right. Your hard drive, you, all your hard drives crashed. No, 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 it's much worse than that. <laughs> that would be the end of his life. No, it's much worse than that. My Lego man has lost his leg. Very funny, Jason. Jason, the toy. Oh, really? S st yeah, steal a bit That's of That's a blooper. Jason. He still got his arms. Congratulations! I didn't leg actually. Nathan, congratulations! You just made it on the blue. Do I get a medal? Yeah. Twenty sixty. Yeah. Well, that's yes. Still... <laughs> that's that's not even. That's probably never going to be better. The Michael win incident of the tango. <laughs> oh, the tango! I didn't even go on the bloopers. That wasn't in ours. Uh, tell you well, what, we might have to do bloopers every month. They're not every year. Well, that's yes. No, I do it like the best bloopers of that certain month. So that is and, worse than yeah. your hard drive dying. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's still a bit. Okay, of though, folks, you can take the mic and Nathan though. That's still a better love story than Twilight, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nathan just found the tango incident. No, I was just laughing. The thing is, though, that a lot Every of the bloops that we do, Everything we're just going to point this out here for the viewers, that, that <laughs> a lot of people who make the <laughs> make bloopers, especially the one with my screen share not working, how the hell am I going to live that down? Hey, we've got a question, actually. Uh, Severe Storms 1258 says... Do you think that the 2016 Atlantic hurricane season will be more active than this year's? Yes. Yes. You could actually damn. That's, yeah. that's going to have to be a. Yes. Absurd. Any any reasoning this behind year. that at all? Well, seeing as how this year was an El Nino, I think <laughs> yeah. next year will be a weakening down to El Nino or neutral. You, but I, anyway, next year I could definitely see a more active Atlantic season. Lee. Yep. Yeah. Well, I will confirm is the El Nino had peaked last month. So the El Nino is on a downward trend as of now. Oh, really? Interesting. As of, as of but now. Here, but the thing is, though, Lee, is that NOAA themselves are actually saying that 
Um, the, what? Noah's saying themselves that the El Nino is supposed to get stronger. So yeah, I have a strong kid again. I don't know how this that's, how strong that's El Nino is going to get. But Craig, I think I know, don't they have be, secondary peaks sometimes? They can sometimes, have secondary peaks. But I think they can't have secondary peaks. I don't believe that, uh, Craig. I think it's I think it's done it already. Well, if, if no one's right. saying that, then there's some. I, I don't. Wrong I wouldn't believe them. Maybe we'll talk yeah, about uh, El Nino later. But anything else to add on the Atlantic Hurricane season next year? Uh, maybe. Do you think we'll think finally get that Cat Five? I think we'll finally well, get a Cat Five. I think. If we don't, then I don't know where the heck it will come from. But if it comes up in postseason analysis, aka. Joaquin, not Jay uh -huh. Hayley, No, I think um, Rob's a much more... Uh, but yeah, if it doesn't happen for Joaquin, but I don't think it will anyway. But I think it could happen either next year or in the next, what, yeah. well, five years. I believe um, uh, I someone think mentioned actually, at some yeah. point that they said that 2016 would be comparable to 2010. I don't know what you guys think about that? Yes, I, I think that's going to be yeah. the case over here in Australia. I, fir I firmly believe that uh, we'll see an, a repeat. Well, 2010, when we had the uh, Brisbane floods back mm. then too. Yeah. And didn't so you, have what, a, what you had wildfires the year before, didn't you? I think else? we did, Nathan. No, but no. Good, uh, this summer's going to be very, very interesting, and uh, later on during our broadcast, uh, we'll uh, cover the uh, Australian scene, but yeah. it looks like my um, predictions are going to turn out to be correct again. I remind everyone of our schedule this evening at 9 o'clock, which is in just 15 minutes' time. We're going to Hypo World Cup Day 15 live. We'll, we'll be, we'll be, we're covering eight games tonight because there wasn't any action last night. Um, unexpected postponements across the board in mm. Group E and F. Yes. Uh, in Group G and H, we've also got action tonight, so everyone else who hasn't completed the groups yet will, will be playing to find out who goes into the round of 16. Um, so the first round of games will be taking place at 9 o'clock, the second round at 11, and will be finished by half past midnight. After that, we'll be discussing Typhoon Melor. I believe it is a typhoon now. Uh, JMA had it 55 knots, 10 minutes sustained, which would correlate to around 75 miles an hour, 1 minute sustained. So, um, sounds to me like a typhoon, but not confirmed. Um, but we're talking Melor. Uh, then we've got open mic. We are starting our 24-hour runs now because of the impending danger from Typhoon Malor. So we will have rolling coverage here on Force 13 Live um, whilst the threat persists. Yes. But I do see uh, where that is next year. But uh, then uh, here's the next question. What will happen with these cars? Will we see... Well, a repeat of certain years, like 2014, 2010. I think these packers still be quite active too. Yeah, but... Actually, I think we may see a couple of tropical uh, signals in the East Pack. Hmm. Oh, right. be after Jasper season. and I were talking uh, talking about this yesterday. Um, just want to take some questions whilst we've got the chance here with 10 more minutes. Um, Stephen P. Shaw says, just saw that you were on. So what number and ranking does Malor put us at for the year? I think he means how many storms we've had and how it yes. compares with other years. I'll get on to that and find out for you very soon. Martinez says, any chances of a Texas hurricane landfall in 2016? Well, you can't rule that out, but... Well, that's, an, that's an easy answer to say. <laughs> yes. Is anyone going to try and make a more specific prediction there? Or is it too... What sort, of, it, what sort of prediction are Or is it too to unclear? Me? Well, a yes or no. <laughs> oh. Do you think it's likely? Do you think it's unlikely? Texas hurricane landfall? When's the last time a hurricane hit Texas? It's been a little while, hasn't it? I think it may have been... I don't know. I um, don't know whether this is just completing it or... 
I'm sure they yeah, can't have been Ike the last time Texas had a hurricane. It might have been, you know. It may have been Ike, yeah, actually. I think it might. And so... if it wasn't, and if Ike didn't do that, it would have been Gustav. Oh, I think Ike was on the board. So, I think Florida don't get one, that's you. Woof. Well. Well, if it's anyone, it's going to be Florida. <laughs> I think Dr. Florida does it all get it. Yes, because Florida... You know, I've for one, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, Florida are well overdue for one, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like it's me over happen. here, the tropical cyclone. It's yeah. like where David is. He's due, he's way overdue in a, a tropical cyclone. And even David knows it. He admits it. And quite right. So the, la the, last one, the last one was uh, 1974. Now, consider and it that. was five hundred uh, five hundred kilometers off the uh, off the coast. Forty one years ago. Yeah. Yep. Now, that yeah, that. I'm one glad next year. you know David's honesty and saying, "Yeah, I know. I'm overdue for an ex uh, for an extra for a, a tropical cyclone." Because because here's the thing: it's amazing how many people will not admit that. Quite literally, it's amazing how many folk will not admit that. Because there's going to be somebody out there who will say, Nah, I'm not over to you. Yeah. Fine again. But I can it's... definitely guarantee you right now that I think that you will be more active than the yes, Atlantic. Yes, I, I, I will agree. I will agree. Uh, I can admit that today. I can agree with that because this year, how can we describe it in one word? Shocking. <sighs> It wasn't good. It it was wasn't decent. It I know yes it had quite a bit of storm, but it wasn't the season I was expecting. Obviously, because of my first hurricane season. But In the Atlantic. I know it was. <laughs> yes. Are you telling me yeah. that you you wanted the Atlantic to wake up because it was your first season? <laughs> no. Nathan. <laughs> But the, only, the only thing we can do is to compare it with other years that had these strong and lineals, which yes. is 998, and how was the 98 season active? And how was the 2004 season? Because hmm. that was an El Nino and all. Mm. I'm trying to think of years coming out of El Nino's. Mm. Uh, 2005 was El Nino? No. No, uh, 05 was, wasn't El Nino. Or four was the only one. Well, five we, might have been we, neutral, I'm not sure. Neutral what year was that? Neutral to the weak El Nino. You know, oh five. Yeah. Oh five. Pretty sure it was a neutral. That was ne I think that was just neutral, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know which way it was oh, leaning towards, was... but. I think it was La Nino. I think it was El Nino, actually. Because I remember. Was it? I think it was Nathan actually said that it was a new year. Oh. Which year? 2005. No, I'm pretty sure it was neutral and that year into 06. I'm still doing the research for Stephen, by the way. I'm nearly done. Oh, I've done this already, but I know I asked the question. But it's basically, I know, just whilst Nathan's doing some research for a question, um, anyone in, in the team or anyone, any of the viewers at all, I know I did a, what was the best looking Cat 1 hurricane or Cat 1 storm this year. The best looking cat? One. <laughs> And Nathan? Funny, Nathan? No. Martino We're says not. Ike was the last hurricane to strike Texas. Bill does not count. That was quite clear. Uh, What's the right, international space station? It's quite high today, isn't it? Hank says, do you think Malore will be another Hagger Pit? Oh, come off it. Hey, there is a chance. Well, I'm not at peak intensity, but the HWRF right now is predicting a Category 4 landfall with 140 mile an hour winds. That's 
potentially the oh. worst case scenario. Um, GFS is saying the weakest, I think, at 999 millibars. But most of the models right now, I've got to tell you, are predicting at least a weak typhoon landfall in the Philippines, either in Samar, where the Hagapit made landfall last time, or in southernmost Luzon. That's what's going to happen. It's just going to be a weak typhoon. Or it could be a Category 3. Could be a Cat 4. If it's lucky. If it's lucky. Is that what you're predicting, Nathan? What now? Cat 4. No, I'm not predicting it. I wouldn't. Um, I think that would be a little bit foolish to predict a Cat 4 landfall when the storm isn't anywhere near that. Uh, <coughs> it would be unnecessarily alarmist. So, um, I'd say that so, the people of the Philippines should be prepared for at least Signal 2 conditions along the coast of Samar and Luzon, maybe Signal 3. At least, right now, and possibly more, if it continues to intensify. Yeah, they've got to, they've got to watch out for also, the, it could be, uh, I'm just actually going to try and refresh RAM here, see if it's up to date. No, no forecast track change, nothing. Apart from satellite imaging. 2005 was a neutral year, yes. It's only was slightly above average temperatures. Okay. I've got information now about 2015, how it ranks in terms of all the years. 20, uh, in terms of tropical storm activity, 2015 is 8th. Whoa. With 91 storms. Uh, 1984 had 92. 1997 with 94. Uh, so I guess 1997 is the one to look at, and at this time last year, uh, sorry, this time in 1997, on this calendar day, it was at 91. So we're basically on track with 97. On track with 97, which finished up with 94, that was, I think, 5th or 4th, 5th, uh, nope, 6th. But how many hurricanes did that year have? A record 60. Uh, we're at and how 50, many have we had this year? 50 this year. Yeah. Uh, major hurricanes, so we'll we broke the record for that many moons ago. 36 were currently at. The record was 32. And Cat 5s yeah. were still 4 away from the record then. I don't think at this late stage we're going to see another Cat 5 this year. That's Do you South Pacific. Un unless it's Malor. Oh, no. <laughs> unless it's Malor. Yeah, and unless Malor has some rapid intensification rockets up its backside, and then that's the only way I could see that happening. And the sea surface temperatures are um, relatively warm. Oh, it's like, 29. Yes. Run about there. I'm just going to try and confirm that. Okay, 31, 30 degree heat swath, or 32 in fact. You, you, you know, the Atlantic is actually still quite warm, even for this time of year. And I'd like to point stand. out that my microphone wasn't on whilst I said that to the to the viewers. I just, oh, <laughs> just going to say that that's again. a blooper. I was going to say, Nathan, well, it's Nathan, not because Nathan. all I heard was silence. Um, I was just saying that if you've got any questions, send them in quickly because we're about to go to the Hypo World Cup coverage. Um, but we will have breaks at half time and the full time whistle in between the two games that we're co covering tonight. Yeah, but Nathan, you came back on live and said that. So therefore, it's a blooper. But no You've one, made two but no one heard it. The microphone wasn't live. <laughs> on. It wasn't on. Then you came on live. Turned your microphone back. It wasn't on. on. So no one heard anything. There were no blo There would have been no blooper if you hadn't have opened your mouth. Wait, wait. I there is a blooper first. now. I did that you, first, didn't you, I? Yes, so. yes, you did. Yes, you put I, your foot in it this time, Nathan. I certainly Don't did, Craig. blame anyone else. Thanks very much. That's two bloopers in one live stream. No. He's on for the hat trick. No. An another blue, another blooper I want to point out is Nathan that we are in the wrong chat room. 
Yeah, well, that's not, that's <laughs> that's not, so not important, Jed. That's, that's not, not so important. Don't go right there. Now. Uh, but it, that's it, not that's not a hat trick. It does leave Maybe, us vulnerable yeah. to people who can be disruptive to the to, to the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> God. It'd be a very small loop of them. Anyway, sea surface temperatures near Melor are exactly on Melor, to be precise, are around 28 degree border towards Vietnam. And just getting over Luzon and no more. West Pacific struggling. Struggling for heat. It's cooling down below it. It's freezing. <laughs> Good one. Good one. I say, I use this, Jasper. Sea surface temperatures elsewhere. Indian Ocean's warming up. Gulf of Carpentaria is really warm. And yes, that's. that's um, could be a very interesting uh, surprise on the radar before Christmas. And even so the before Gulf of Carpentaria. Or yep. even west of that one there, it's really warm. So and and probably, uh, and possibly East Timor. East Timor uh, region across the, uh, right. the top end. Right. South Pacific's relatively warm. It's not warm enough. It's just warm enough to sustain some tropical life, as in storms. Um, it's possibly just an inverse good form because it's only 28 degrees. Near yeah, Solomon Islands, it's 29, 30 degrees. So that's warm enough. That's definitely warm enough to sustain. 38, 38 degrees here, Fahrenheit. Uh, Gosh, that. Yeah. So 38 Four degrees six. in Manchester. Oh, hey. Four Celsius and Manchester. Right. Nathan, I was just about to say, Nathan, you wish. I don't actually. I think you minus do. one's a bit twenty. I'd rather or not have a hundred Fahrenheit. Do you know, Nathan? Sorry. What's minus one in Fahrenheit? Do you know? Thirty. Is it? Well, at, the actual number is thirty point two. Yeah. <laughs> so zero must be thirty-one Fahrenheit. Do you have to go? Yes. Is it? Oh, yeah. 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> so 2, two cells must be 5, 4. Oh. What's that? Yeah, she's talking in a microphone. She's talking in Yeah, it does, it have, it does it have the <laughs> Yes, that does mean it is 9 o'clock. I've just heard wind, I've uh, just caught wind here that the... Um, the games Can't have been delayed how did, how by did a few moments. That? How did you manage to catch wind? For goodness sake. <laughs> it's figure of speech. Really? Yes. <laughs> As it's a figure of speech. Thank you, Lee. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that, Nathan. I was taking the mic. Yes. I wasn't taking the mic off. As yeah, well, oh, who would? Who would take the mic office? Honestly. Mm. Oh, Don't trust me, office. Well, they're not <laughs> forecasting the cold that I'm expecting. The <laughs> what, mic office? Yes. <laughs> they, they, no, they certainly aren't. At least they're better than the National Hurricane Center. Yes! Joaquin. Joaquin, anyone? Well, what did they do wrong with Joaquin? Um... um. Do you want to know? Here, here it comes. Basically, every uh, advisory was wrong. Was Almost. it now? First, it was predicting a uh, tropical depression. Oh, of course, yep. at the start, it was awful, yeah. That's true. Yeah. It was just preposterous. I thought you were going to jump into the I think it was a Cat 5 camp. No. Mm. That so, was close, though. Do it pardon me. It was close. It was close. Give it that. Give it its views. Views, and only, only one Thank model, you. only one Not model sure. was predicting it going out to sea. I remember how quickly that intensified as well. Yes, that one, that one went for what? Stalled yeah, exactly. over the Bahamas for what? Three yeah. days? Yeah, that, yeah. If not more. Mm. And then finally began to shift its backside and bombed it to the north. All right. Well, I hear that there's been some delay here at the Hypo World Cup. They've put yeah, back the games for 15 it. minutes. So uh, we're going to have extended discussion here for just 10 more minutes before we go to the action, which will hopefully start on time at the new time of 9.15.
But, and, and just also another thing, just to continue the debate and walk in here. Walk in, I know the reconnaissance mission was recording 138 knot, I think it was flight level or ground level winds. I'm not sure what it was, but I know they were recording that. I think it was ground level. Drop sun, wasn't it? I think it was. I think that recorded a ground level. I'm not. Pro I'm not sure of where it recorded it, but I know that is Cat Five wind speed. But I think it needs to be at 100. I think the new baseline actually should not be 157 miles per hour. I think it should be 160, because that's where every other storm seems to be noticed at Cat Five. That is a fact. That is actually a true fact. Most of the storms this year have been recognised at 160, which is 140 knots. So that's where I feel new Cat 5 cutoff should be. I think the whole 150 region should be Cat 4. I think that's fair enough. Uh, uh, well, it is, isn't it? Craig. Well, the main no, the actual wind cut off is actually one five six now for cat four, oh, and, a, yeah. and a one five seven for cat five. So basically, therefore, Joaquin was a low end the, cat five. Yeah, just two more quick questions here from um, from the channel. Martinez says, which names in the twenty fifteen season should be retired? Gaston. Gaston. Yes. Yeah, that's on the books for next year. Get it off. Of the 2015 season. I know, somebody season. ever go crazy. Craig, have you, you said done a blue pup? No, you said last, you said next year. No, it's, I said this year. I'm going to have to rewind the tape and see what, what it's on it. Which names in the uh, 2015 season should be retired? I, I read it just like, I just read it. Mm, never mind, we'll just move on from that. Right, that was, just a, that was say, just a mistake. You're not even going to say what? the obvious ones? Joaquin should be retired. Mm. Do that, but I'm um, not sure how many deaths that caused. Don't people, think it caused. A lot many. of people want Erica retired. Erica, I think will get retired. I'm not positively oh, sure right. about that. Uh, Stephen also yeah. says he, he's um, going to be back. Um, I think later on when we talk Typhoon Malo at half past midnight. Says the Gulf of Maine SST is 9.6 Celsius today. Any chance of tropical formation? <laughs> The Gulf of what? The <laughs> Gulf of Maine. Maine. M -A -I -N -E. hmm. The Gulf of Maine. Uh, yes, it was, a, it was a joke. It's a, there isn't any chance of tropical formation near the Gulf of Maine. It's not just not about the temperatures. It's other factors. Mm -hmm. Wind shear and everything. Yeah. Wind shear, divergence, and um, oh, I said wind shear, and dry Mason, air. Do you want to mm. change the link? Yes, I'm well aware of that. I'm getting onto it now. This is what happens. He's on to it, to, folks. This is what He's happens it. when I have to um, present and do this at the same time. Uh, yes, it's are. not we all get Nathan, a massive break from this. I've just given everyone the background showing the usual background we do when we do the Hyper World Cup action. And these are tonight's fixtures. Aaron are playing New Mauritius. Our live game, Jupiter Land versus Houdonia. Norio mm. versus my team, the Fools Republic, and Oria versus Devon's team, Galisa. They're all playing simultaneously, and that will start in just less than 10 minutes. Um, let me give you the rundown on what everything would mean, results-wise. If, uh, if New Mauritius were to get a draw tonight, uh, they would go through to the knockout stages. Um, Jupiterland, they would need... They would, need, they would need a win against Houdonia, um, unless Aaron lose. <laughs> now basically, Jupiterland oh. Jupiter have got to match the Aaron result to go through. Yeah. I think you have been this will win. So, um, Jupiter Land will certainly be fancying their chances tonight. Norio versus Fool's Republic. Um, Norio have an outside chance of progressing, well, especially if Galisa were to lose at Oria, or if that was a draw, because if it was a draw, then Norio would uh, have to beat the Fool's Republic, and it would be them two who would be going through. So, a lot of things yet to happen in Group F there, with those bottom four teams. Mm. Um, we'll have action very, very soon indeed. It's going to be exciting, I hope. 
Um, uh, any any score predictions, guys? <laughs> I'm going to predict Jupiterland versus Hedonia, and I'm going to predict 25 nil to Jupiterland. What? <laughs> Get real now. Hedonia aren't that bad. Uh, Jupiter Lane, a free Hedonia one. For the total, I got a bit 3 0 in Numerous Assassin. 3 or 4 0 in. Are you on about Aaron versus Numerous? We're talking about your game. Oh, right. I didn't realize you were talking about that. I'm talking about any others if you like. You know what? I'm going to actually rate my ridiculous prediction, but even though I do think that will happen. Jupiter Land, I'd go in 3 0. I think they'll win either 5 or 6. Right, Is that better than uh, Well... Uh, so better 25 nil. Cause... It's happened once already in the tournament. Hey guys, I'm just yeah. going to let you talk for a little while longer whilst I set up everything, because uh, everything's still not set up yet. Even with the postponement. <laughs> um, and we'll be, God underway. Damn it, we'll be underway in just six minutes' time. God damn it! Maybe there will be a draw. Take it right, it could be sense. Well, uh, wait, look at how you doing. <sighs> Terrible. No bias, dude. Um, just out of respect and out of. <laughs> you know what? <coughs> stop, because that's where I end up trying to dig myself a hole. And Jesper, don't you dare take that down the wrong way. Jesper, what's your temperature now? It's not updated yet. It should be coming soon. comes in every hour. Oh, does it? It's your temperature. Uh, as of the last uh, update, it was 0 0.2 degrees yeah, it's mi minus. It's minus 1.5 here. Apparently. <laughs> the wind is gusting to 4 meters per second. Which is period, what, five miles in there? That's eight. 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 That's fairly, that, that's not... Barely, basically, you're just, you're, it's enough to annoy you. Yeah. It's enough to annoy so you. Sustained winds is two meters per second, which is four miles per hour. So basically, uh, that's the sort of wind that would be enough to annoy you. You, uh, you uh, and Facebook, if you were reading it outside. But again, but uh, but to be below freezing, but I like that one chill. One yeah. chill, yep. Have to watch it. And it's clear weather, so it's obvious that it is. Um, but then again, there's a positive chance of snow, and a lot of it. Uh, well, I see some serious cold coming to here from mid January onwards. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. The first drop of and cold Christmas cold. Day, apparently, in Scotland is supposed to be white. Supposed to be wet. Uh... Some you said white, didn't you? Yes, I said white. Wait, uh, it's supposed to be some snow in Christmas Day. Uh, in parts. I think it's the whole of Scotland, I'm not sure. Then again. Uh, I'll check up they, that. They, they said, Scotland. then again, we've got to sit, look at this. They did say this. Wait, some time ago they said this back in oh. oh. 36 days of, they said 36 days of winter, we're supposed to get 30, obviously, 36 days of snow. And did that happen? No. No, yeah, I'd rather do it proper. 36 days of snow, that was jumping in basically waist deep. <laughs> Saying that it was going to snow for 36 days of winter. That's just completely preposterous. Hey, it might they... happen yet. Yeah, but then again, yeah, but they killed that a little bit soon. Just because it's an El Nino year doesn't mean that could actually happen. Did last I think that's what El Nino. <laughs> yeah, but that's what everything's now based down on this year. And not that down. far away, also. Mm -hmm. But then again, I could see that still happen. I hope it does. What a white Christmas. Mm -hmm. Last time I think Scotland had one was 2010. I don't think we're going to get one. It's going to happen after Christmas. Yep, probably. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, the main cold will happen after Christmas. Yeah. The main, the main big, bad cold snap will happen mm -hmm. in January, February. Possibly even a repeat of 2013 summer. Or spring, sorry. 
I the box two thousand thirteen, yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Nothing yes. but snow. And that. That's oh. still coming, Nathan. It's uh it's it's on its way. And looks like for me, that was the best summer that was the best summer. Oh <laughs> Well then again, summer after that was a bit no, well, I'm about to learn something about that summer, but I'm not going to say that now, but... Then again, the summer of that year wasn't exactly the best. What year, what year are you talking about? 2013, that wasn't exactly uh, the best. Yeah, uh, well, it was actually, I mean, we dry, wasn't it? Mm. But November and October, well, October basically, had a massive heat wave. Quite literally, we had a massive heat wave. Right for the October holidays, that was strange. But the last, the, 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 that year, best time, best time of that year was obviously yeah. the spring. Mm. So oh, aye, yeah. Sky. It lasted was... for a good two weeks, that snow. Aye, in the March, aye. Yeah. Yes. Daffodils and supposed to be at school that day, but I had the best day of the year. Not going to school for a good bit. Oh, fantastic. Yes, well, guys, it appears that the games are now about to kick off, so it appears that we're going to go to the action between um, Jupiter Land and Hudonia. We'll give you updates of everything else that goes on elsewhere. Let me just quickly go through the team sheets before kickoff for Jupiter Land. Lee Martin is the manager. Hello, Lee. Hello there. In goal, Jim Robbie. In defence, Anderson, Daly, Alistair and Kennedy. Midfielders, Tylor, Miller, Shields and Tillotson. And up front, it's Lewis Reed and Kerr McGowan. In Hudonia's side, um, Daniel Hudson is the player manager in goal. In defence, Bernard, Cole, Mal Maloney and Norris. In midfield, Williams, Wright, Mason and Waters. And up front, it's Lucas and Watts. Plenty of people well on the done, bench as well, but we are now kicking off here and the <laughs> game between Jupiterland and Hudonia is underway. I have the last point here. <laughs> Craig. Oh, sorry. This one little noise was all it took. We were on our way. We lost oh, it. The only chance just goes wide. Jupiterland already had a chance there, after just 15 seconds, the Hudonia fans have already lit a flare. And now the ball's been kicked away. <clears throat> so, Jupiterland hoping to cement their position in the knockout stages with a win tonight. The fate is very much in their own hands. Um, so, best of luck to them. Aaron also have a chance tonight if Jupiterland slip up, and even Hudonia could go through if results conspire towards them. Right now, ball headed away. Some sustained pressure by Jupiterland hemming Hudonia into their own half. This is Force 13's live coverage of Jupiterland versus Hudonia, which has kicked off slightly late. And uh, hopefully it'll be an exciting game. Pouring ra rain this afternoon. It is afternoon here in um, Rega. And now Hudelnia finally have the ball to themselves. They try and get it forward and that seems to have been a bad decision because Jupiterland get the ball back again. Uh, and actually an early knock has been taken by one of the Jupiterland players. Um, it's one of the midfielders. Dean Shields, he might have to, I'm not sure whether he'll go off early, but he's carrying a knot, you can see it, and I think he'll be okay. And he just had the ball then, he's passed it off to the left to Tyler. Now it's forward with Reed. he's fallen over and the ball goes out of play thanks to a Hudonia tackle. It's going to be a throw for Jupiter Land, four minutes gone, still nil-nil. No goals elsewhere just yet. Aaron Play, New Mauritius, Norio, Fools Republic, and Aurea Galisa. If you would like anyone to win tonight, today, wherever you are, um, we'd love to hear from you. Whichever team you may support in the Hyper World Cup, whichever one you're rooting for, I'm sure they'd be pleased to hear from you. Particularly if it's Jupiter Land 
Cudonia Fools Republic or Gleesa because they're in and around the team this evening and would love to hear from you oh bad tackle here and it's one of the Jupiterlam players who might be going in the book early here yes it's Jonathan Miller who has been booked by the referee going in on a dubious sliding tackle and he's been given a yellow card so the first card of the game after just five minutes hopefully that won't set a tone for the rest of the game it's going to be a free kick to Hudonia taken short. Passing it around. Now trying to get forward. Lost the ball. Here's Miller now. Launches it towards the right hand side. No one's there. And it's going to be Hudonia who take it away again. Trying to get forward. And they are doing so. It's with Lucas. Beating the defender. He's still on goal. Keeper manages to put his body in the way. But that's so easily could have ended up being a goal, you know. Hudonia. Hudonia went ahead last time out before losing the game ultimately. They scored an early goal. They could be through again here. Maybe that's their method. But it's uh, cleared away. Six minutes gone, still nil nil as it is everywhere. But interesting start to this game. And there could be a good counter-attack on here for Jupiterland. No, it's offside against Lewis Reed. So a free kick for Hudonia. Brought it right back to the edge of the centre circle, actually. It's been quite a run he went on. And that offside. And now they have it on the left with Williams in towards Nick Mason. Now finds Waters. Moves to the left-hand side. Oh, he's been fouled, and the referee is calling up another of the Jupiter Land players now. This time it's Scott Kennedy. He's gone in the book as well. So, two early yellow cards for Jupiter Land. I think the uh, manager, Lee, needs to tell him to calm down a bit. And clearance from that resulting free kick means that it remains 0-0 with no real chances on goal yet certainly no shots well just the one from Hudonia and they've got a throw now and they're going to try and get forward into the box and the little mistake there means that Jupiterland can clear and the ball's gone out of play in Hudonia's own half and they will take this throw after the deflection so off it goes. And Hedonia, to be honest, looking pretty bright in the first 10 minutes. First, yeah. first three or four minutes belong to, to Jupiter Land, the second three or four to Hedonia. And there's a foul being given here. Hedonia with a free kick. Jupiter Land still not looking very composed just yet, at least. They're forcing all these fouls, and the free kick went over the bar. And it's still goalless after 10 minutes. Plenty more games this evening. This is the first round of games. Yesterday's games were all postponed due to security concerns. Oh, there's been another foul here. This time from a Hudonia player. Far up the field. They're in their own half. The referee is having a word. And I think he's going to let him off there. Yes. And that was uh, Chester Burnett there, who was not booked, but the referee made it in no uncertain terms. It was his final warning. And there's another foul here that's been given against Hudonia, the referee. To be quite honest, I think he's got most of the decisions right so far. The challenges have been very harsh. And here's another shot from distance from Jupiter Land. They've had two in the last two minutes, none of them really troubling the keeper, making two easy saves. Twelve minutes gone, Jupiter Land nil, Hudonia nil. We're also yet to hear any word from the other games. Bulls Republic only need a draw to, pro to progress to the next group stage, the next um, stage, the knockout tournament. 
Lisa can guarantee that with a decent win. And so can Jupiter Land. But it's Houdoni on the ball now, trying to get forward. If he's on side, yes, it's rolled out of play from the challenge at the back, led by Neil Anderson, and it's going to be a throw near the corner flag for Hudonia, who have looked decent in this first 13 minutes. But the tackles have been flying in. Two bookings already for Jupiter Land players, and almost one for a Hudonia player. And now they're coming forward again, Hudonia, with a chance here, straight through to... Lucas and he's lost the ball but they've still got a chance here now with Watts oh it's just gone wide and it's going to be a goal kick and here they are getting forward now this is Jupiter land oh shot from distance on the right hand side it was very ambitious but went sailing over the bar. There's been a goal elsewhere already, and it's not good news for Gleeser, because Oria have scored. It's Oria 1, Gleeser 0, and Gleeser will be going out at this rate. If I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure, actually. Yes, no, Gleeser, Gleeser are going out if that score stays the same and the Fools Republic don't win. But here, there's a chance now for Jupiter Land on the left, trying to cross it in. They're now playing more directly. Oh, penalty given! Penalty here after a bad challenge from one of the Hudonia players, and the oh, referee's penalty. given it. So Jupiter Land now have a chance to score from the spot. It's going to be Lewis Reed who will take this. And this is exactly what Jupiter Land have been looking for from the spot. It's in. And it's Jupiter Land who take the lead. And might just be propelling themselves to the knockout stages. Jupiter Land won Hudonia nil. Oh, a counter-attack straight away there from Hudonia, but didn't quite make it. Here's Kennedy, being roundly booed by the Hudonia fans. They're certainly making themselves vocal. They weren't happy with the goal either, with the penalty decision or anything about it. Force 13 live coverage of Jupiter Land versus Hudonia already. Um, quite an encounter that it's been so far. I hope the momentum keeps up. Oh, it could have been another penalty there, you know. A really cynical tackle by one of the Hudonia players on a um, Jupiter Land play inside the box. And Jupiter Land have to clear it from their own defensive area. It's going to be a throw for Hudonia on the left-hand side now. We'll keep you up to date with anything else that goes on. And there's been another foul called here just outside the penalty area. This time for Hudonia taken quickly cleared away. Gone out of play as well. So a throw again for Hudonia, taken from the left hand side. They're keeping the pressure up as long as they can, I suppose. Ooh, that's cleared away. Did look for a moment as if it was going to get close to one of the Hudonia players. Here comes a counter attack from Jupiter Land. And it's, it's cleared away there, fired away by Derek Cole. Any comments during the game? Let us know. Afterwards, at half past midnight, we'll be talking about severe tropical storm Melor in the West Pacific. Until then, we have eight games to keep you up to date with. Four of them taking place right now. And the other four in two hours' time. Or less than that. Another foul's been given now. Referee's not happy with another tackle that's gone in by... This time it's... Uh, Dean Shields. And the referee sent him away without a booking. So it could have been another spot of bother for Jupiter Land there, despite leading by a goal to nil. And 
this time it's cleared away. 20 minutes gone. It's uh, Jupiterland 1, Hedonia 0, and the referee's not happy with another challenge, and it's another yellow card for a Jupiterland player. This time it's the forward Lewis Reed, who's gone into the referee's notebook after siding down one of the Hedonia players. They really need to watch themselves. Bad discipline. Headed away from Hedonia. Uh, there's been a goal elsewhere. It's been a penalty and it's been scored by Aaron. So it's Aaron 1, New Mauritius 0 after 21 minutes. That will come as a shock to some people as well. So we could have two shocks on the cards tonight. If New Mauritius lose and... Um, if New Mauritius lose against Aaron by more than three goals, uh, by more than two goals, uh, New Mauritius are going out. So if Aaron th win 3-0, New Mauritius are going out. You never know. Hello, Lee. Am I right to if it stays at this to the one you don't have to talk? Um... No, no, it's it's goal difference. Would it just be a goal difference? Would it? It would be on goal difference. Um, at the moment, New Mauritius goal difference is superior by just one. So if it's what I'd say, that you'd yeah, if there's another goal here by Jupiter Land, then it will be level on goal difference as well, the top spot. Twenty-three minutes gone. Still, Jupiter Land one. Hudonia nil chance. Oh, it's in! Goal for Hudonia! I wasn't expecting that. Neither was I. The ball came flying in from the right hand side. I don't know where the defence had got to, but it was hammered home by none other than Gary Lucas, who secures an equaliser here. <laughs> that came out of thin air. Yeah, and it's yeah. Jupiter Land 1, Hudonia 1. And Hudonia on the attack again, it's 2 against 1 in defence. Jupiter Land getting back quickly. Hudonia looking the better side all of a sudden, but that cross found no one, and it's out for a goal kick. Exciting times here. Very interesting. And it's. Hudonia on the ball again here. David, go ahead. Oh, another foul's been given. Go ahead, David. Jupiter uh, Land will be very uh, pleased at uh, having, what is it, two, two points up? No, it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, sorry. Oh, that's Robbie. another chance Ooh. that Hudonia had there. An offside goal there. Um, he knew it was offside before he hit it. He went in the back of the net. Obviously no goal. And offside's been given the other way now after big ball forward there. And Jupiter Land have found offside. This game has been blown wide open. It's Jupiter Land forward again, shot from distance. Oh my word, it's cleared the keeper who was well outside of his area and it's into the back of the net. And Jupiter Land take the lead under the most amazing circumstances, almost yes, from the halfway the line. He was nearly at the halfway line and scored from there with the keeper backpedalling desperately and couldn't save it. Daniel Hudson will be apoplectic. 27 Eeyaw, minutes on the clock. Eeyaw, Eeyaw. Jupiter Land 2, Hudonia 1. I don't know what to go back and think. Probably the best goal of the game at the same time certainly was. Right. And Jupiter Land have the ball again right now. Another foul's been called by the referee. It's punctuated with them. Uh, this is dreadful. It's going to be a free kick that Danny, that Dean Shields will take. It's on to the left to Tyler. Now to oh, Miller. Like Forward towards team. Reed, who's through on goal. Oh, the keeper saves. I thought he wasn't going to catch that for a moment. There's some people who turn to your stream, by the way. 
Actually, the score's the red side of these. <laughs> I've no idea what happened there. It's changed back now. Has it? I don't know how long it's been like that for. That just did it away, actually. Oh, and here's a chance for Houdonia. Oh, could have been a penalty shout there. Oh, and it's clear the defender's on the clearance. And, he, and oh, it's in just wide. I thought Jupiter Land had the best chance ever to go through on goal there. Indeed, they cleared Hudonia's own clearance. Beat their own defenders. Uh, sorry, Jupiter Land's clearance beat Hudonia's defenders. And found the front man amazingly well. Beat the offside trap. It was Kerma Garen. And he just blasted it wide. Into the 30th minute here. This is a game and a half. It's Houdoni with the ball right now. Waters. Now to the back with Maloney. He hoops it forward. Couldn't find Lucas. And now Houdoni have the ball again on the left this time. Trying to get forward. Finds Lucas. Will he find Watts? Yes. Has he beaten the offside trap? No, he hasn't. That's offside. After 30 minutes, it's Jupiter Land 2, Hudonia 1, and it's been one of the most exciting first halves I've seen in a while. No goals elsewhere just yet, no new ones. It's Aran 1, New Mauritius 0, which will come as a shock to some. Here, of course, Jupiter Land 2, Hudonia 1. Corner for Jupiter Land right now, which will be taken by Tyler. Something happened at the back there, I'm not sure what. Headed away, and now almost further clear, but Hudonia lose the ball on the edge of the penalty area. It goes out wide to Tyler, back in towards goal, and Hudonia might clear it now. Yes, but not very far, on to the halfway line. Here's Miller, Jupiter Land pressing very well indeed now it's for a shot from distance oh it's in it's another goal for Jupiter Land from the edge of the box and the keeper didn't see it coming there may have been bodies in the way but it's Lewis Reed who gets the third here so Jupiter Land 3 Hudonia 1 and things are escalating here, I think, in terms of the actual gameplay, it's riveting. Are Hudonia out of this? It's clear. And now it goes to the person at the back for Jupiter Land. There's only one defender staying back for Jupiter Land. In fact, he's come forward now as well. Crossed in towards goal, headed in. Oh, just hit the crossbar and gone out again. And it's cleared by the Hudonia defenders. And they've got the pressing forward again now. Jupiter Land, I've got to tell you, looking extremely impressive. Goal kick, though, to Hudonia after one of their players got in the way. There's been a goal elsewhere in the Aurelia Gleesa game. Last we heard it was Aurelia 1, Gleesa 0. Gleesa have equalised. So it's 1-1 there now, and as it stands, with the Fools Republic goalless as well, it will be Galisa and the Fools Republic who are going through. Shot for Hudonia went far wide, that's just them. Here it's Jupiter Land 3, Hudonia 1. Four goals in over 30 minutes it's Hudonia trying to come forward now passing it they haven't looked too bad Hudonia you've got to say that Jupiter and have capitalised on their chances and the been the last two goals have been rather rather amazing with the ball again now trying to get forward Jupiter Land shot another shot from distance they've been doing that a lot today the keeper this time saves
and Hudonia just losing every second ball right now. And here come... Oh, Jukes will land again, another shot from distance that the keeper had to tip over the crossbar. They're all reaching their target, and then the corner's gone in, and the two players falling in the box, no penalty given or anything of that nature, and it's cleared a long, long way by the Hedonia defenders. Only one man back for Jupiterland, he's got the ball right now, that's Sean Daly. Back to the goalkeeper, Jim Robbie, allowing Daly to get upfield. And after 36 minutes, in what is an extremely exciting first half, it's 3-1. And Jupiter Lang coming forward again, another shot from distance. And that goes just wide. Very interesting tactics from Jupiter Lang, but it's working so far. A shot from near the halfway line that beat the keeper. And a shot from just outside the penalty area, which made it 3-1. The other goal was a penalty. And an offside decision here against Jupiter Land trying to get forward once more. So it's going to be the Hudonia goalkeeper Daniel Hudson who will take this free kick and he's launched it quite far forward from where he already was. He was well upfield and Hudonia keep hold of the ball not for long. They couldn't get to the front then. And now here comes the counter-attack. This game goes from end to end. Now it's on the left with Jonathan Miller. And he's been tackled, and that's out for a throw. 38 minutes gone, it's still. Uh, Jupiter Land 3, Hudonia 1. Throw in here, which will be taken by Anthony Tyler. In towards the penalty area, and that's easily cleared by Hudonia, who reached the ball first. Very poor throw, actually. But no matter, Jupiter Land have the ball again. And deflection there puts it out for a throw to Jupiter Land. And they'll be very happy at half time. It goes like this. And they're into the box again now. Trying to get further, stumbling through the defence. There's a shot from this as keeper's not reached it. It's in. What an excellent shot that is. Amazing shot from Dean Shields who picked up a knock earlier in the game from the left-hand side of the penalty area to the right-hand side of the goal, bottom right-hand corner, keeper couldn't see it coming, and it nestled there beautifully. It's 4-1. There's been a goal elsewhere too, and it's been a penalty that has been scored by Gleeser, so they're back in it now. They're in the lead. From being behind, they now have a lead, Gleeser. Still goalless between Norillo and the Fools Republic. The only game that remains scoreless at this time. All the action's been here in the first half. It's been a sensational first half, particularly from Jupiter Land, but Eudonia have played their part too. So Aaron 1, New Mauritius 0, Jupiterland 4, Hudonia 1. So with that as it is right now, Jupiterland are top of the group. Uh, Norio 0, Fools Republic 0 and Oreo 1, Gleaser 2. With just less than 5 minutes to the break, just over 4 now. And it's Hudonia who will now try and press forward themselves. For what exactly? Who knows? They'll certainly try and spoil the party by knocking them out of first place if they get a goal or two. There's a shot from distance, and the keeper saves quite easily. Hands above his head, ball lands dead on there. And he's going to clear it there, and it's headed forward. And Hedonia will take it out of defence. 41 minutes played, it's still 4-1. There's been a foul given here against Jupiter Land. It's going to be a free kick taken by um, David Mal Maloney. Plenty of Hudonia shirts in the penalty area. And that, trying to get it through. 
and lots of bodies on the line there to stop the ball going anywhere near the goal and that's cleared again and now here come Jupiter Land on a counter attack they decided to go wide and not through they've got plenty of support there's been a foul that's been drawn here by the Hudonia player and it's not a good one either the referee might be pulling out a card towards Alan Morris yes he's been booked so a yellow card for him now as well the Hudonia fans not best pleased with that in towards goal and cleared initially but out for a corner corner for Jupiter Land this is going to be taken by Tylor in towards goal headed in beats the keeper and another head there from Kermagoan makes it 5-1 here in the first half Hudonia falling apart and falling out of the competition in most ungracious circumstances it seems and we're not even at the half time whistle and they find themselves down by five goals to one if you're the Hudonia manager what on earth do you tell them at half time Hudonia with the ball now trying to make something of anything really but the defence is too strong and they've had the ball nicked off them again there nope they've got it back Hudonia now loft it forward doesn't find anyone back towards the goal and the keeper can now Jim Robbie belt it forward finds Miller now on to Reed. the crowd very happy except the Hudonia fans Reed's now gone on to the right maybe he can find a cross it's to Tillotson in towards the penalty area it's shot in and it's in the back of the net once more unbelievable this time it's Kermagoran who gets I think his second goal I can't believe what I'm seeing Jupiter land six Hudonia one an absolute demolition in the last 20 minutes and a complete numbness amongst the Hudonia fans right now as we approach the half-time whistle two minutes added on we've just completed the first minute and I'm sure Lee will have a lot to say at half-time but not as much as Daniel Hudson and it's a free kick now to Jupiter Land as well just outside the penalty area in towards goal just goes wide and it makes you wonder what are we going to see in the second half it's been one of the most one-sided first halves I've ever seen and that is the half-time whistle and who would have thought that it would be Jupiter Land 6, Hudonia 1 at half time. Guys, <laughs> where do we start? Well, Jupiter Land will be uh, over, the, oh, what's, over the moon and they'll be uh, very, very pleased with the first half. But Hudonia, well, they knew they were in a, a fight for their life and... Uh, all they could do is uh, regroup and uh, come out and... Uh, well, what on earth do you do when you're five goals down? Well, it's not much. Just persevere and... But we knew that Jupiter on land was very strong. And, well, uh, but to no, be... no one were expecting them to do this in the first no. half of the game. Unbelievable. And in the... Uh, I was predicting three to, uh, what was it, three to one, and <laughs> I met the five, what, uh, out by three, so. Yeah, Craig, hello. Uh, hello, yes. Uh, what do you think of what you've just witnessed in the first half? Um. Absolute <laughs> demolition. Uh, yeah, you don't even deserve it. By, but... by Jupiter Land. 
But then again, when they did equalize, I thought, that, yeah, you know, might be some game on here. Yep. But then Jupiterland just so outclassed them and gave the, basically Jupiterland shoot gave Eudonia what for. I don't think anyone in the world would have seen it coming. What I was most impressed about by Jupiterland, the last ten minutes of that half, they were absolutely impeccable. Their attacking prowess was unbelievable, second to none. Um, from what I've seen in all of the games we've commentated on so far, one day 15, remember, we've done at least one commentary every day, so we've seen at least 15 games. Um, and it's been an unbelievable one, this. I've not seen such an attacking display in the last 10, 20, 30 minutes of the first half as what I just saw. It's been an absolutely amazing first half for Hudonia, uh, for Jupiterland. So, mm -hmm. what on earth is in store for Hudonia in the second half, Craig? Any score predictions? Oh, yeah. uh, I'm expecting 10 from Jupiter Land here if they keep going the way they're going. Yes, I'll, I'll agree with uh, Craig on that. So, looking at one, another four, mm. four tries. Quite often we can see second or half. Or even five. We can see second halves um, usually aren't as lively as the first, but even so, six in the first half, you'd expect them to score at least a couple more. And also, can I quickly bring this up, Nathan? Yes. Mel Lore's got a new forecast track out. All right, go tracking ahead. Ev tracking everything has updated. No change in strength or peak. Still cat one to come out, to, but this time is to make multiple typhoon landfalls in the Pisaeus and come out as barely just coming out as a tropical, uh, not tropical, well, leaving Visayas as a typhoon and then weakening down to a tropical storm and then continuing its weakening trend down to a 40 miles per hour tropical storm whilst drifting south-southwest and then weakening to a tropical depression. Oh, right. And it's satellite imagery right now. Looking like there is an eye wall trying to develop, so I could possibly see a typhoon coming from the next advisory. So this thing's on top. Well, we're going to be talking about that um, a lot more later on tonight. We've got open mic from uh, not open mic. We've got typhoon law discussion um, at half past twelve. Um, we will have a break between the end of this match and the start of the next one. Uh, that will occur whenever full time is. Oh. Um, Another 45 minutes, perhaps, just well, after half past. I'd like to try and rephrase my <laughs> update there on Mel or oh, go on. updated imagery of it. it the thunderstorms are beginning to well continue to tower. Uh, a small, what could be a brief forming, you know, eye wall, but it's looking like tight. But Mel or is growing as well, continuing to grow. So this is it beginning to become. Typhoon, showing typhoon characteristics. So this thing could be at 70 miles per hour, possibly even shoving up to 75. All right. Uh, we've just heard as well that the later games have also been pushed back by 15 minutes. So kickoffs will now be 11:15, which means that um, we'll have a good half hour to talk about storms after the end of this game. So we can show you everything with Melor, but we will have dedicated Melor discussion from half past 12 till 2 o'clock when we go on to open mic for an hour. This is Force 13 live. We're about to start the second half here. Jupiterland 6, Hudonia 1. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that? Aaron won numerous nil, so at this rate, Jupiterland are going top of their group at the last minute with a loss for Numeritius. And for Numeritius, it means that they will still qualify unless they get beat by three goals against Aaron. So Aaron need to score two more if they're going to qualify. Hudonia, I think they're out. Uh, elsewhere, rather, the Fool's Republic only need a draw against Norio to qualify. Um, if they lose, then Norio would have to beat them by four goals to nil. Uh, sorry, not four. Um, I think it's going to be three that they would need. I could be right with four, actually. Oh, no. No, I'm wrong with that as well. They'd have to beat Fool's Public by five goals to nil 
if they were to qualify Norio. So it's a pretty safe bet that Fools Republic are going to go through now. Uh, Galisa, they were behind at one point, and whilst they were behind, um, there was a chance that they'd be going down, but Norio would have to beat the Fools Republic in order to qualify if Galisa don't win tonight. So if Galisa don't win and Norio do, then there will be a shock on the cards. Otherwise, Galisa would have to get beat by five goals to nil against Oria, or by five goals, which I don't see happening considering they're winning 2-1. Craig, anything you'd like to say before we go again with the second half? Well, I'd um, like to say uh, to possibly put a, man a message out to the Hedonia manager, <laughs> I think you'll be sacked. <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, he's a player and the manager. Managing. Yes, so yes. will be finding a new team. The manager and the owner, the manager and the coach, I now have a lot to answer to. Well, not just the coach will be the uh, like manager who will be having to answer to all the angry Houdonian fans. All right. Well, we kick off the second half here, and it's Houdonia who do the kick off and. They're currently in position right now. An early foul that's been given uh, for them here. And a man who's already been booked for Jupiter Land has just been given a talking to. Lewis Reed, only a talking to. Could have been worse there. And it's going to be a free kick for Hudonia. Craig, I sort of cut you off there. What were you saying? At least they didn't put it in the back of the room. Yeah, just ah, yes. I, think, I think the manager of Lee is going to have to make a substitution here because he's got too many players booked in there. Oh, uh, for Jupiter Land. Yeah. Yes. Too many players booked for That's Jupiter nice. Land. So I think the manager Lee is going to have to start considering some very early changes. I think I feel he should have made them at half time because boot players, as we all know, they are liabilities. Can't do things that they're normally good at, but once they're booked, you're booked. You can't do anything. Basically, basically, you can't do anything the entire game. There's been a goal elsewhere, and it's been another penalty, and it's Galisa who have scored again with a second penalty of the game there. So it's now Oria one, Galisa three. So it appears here that Galisa now have this that game wrapped up. Um, though they may not necessarily qualify yet, although it does look very likely that they will now. So it looks like Lisa are through, and the Fools Republic only need a draw. Well, in fact, they can afford to lose by several goals. They'd have to lose 5 0 to not um, go through. And so, lose 5 0 just to get a dribble. So it looks like Fools Republic and Lisa are both going through whatever happens. So safe and sound, home and dry. Yeah, Jupiter Land 6, Hudonia 1 right now. This is the game we're commentating on. If you missed the first half, you've missed one of the most impressive first halves of your life. Um, particularly from Jupiter Land in the last 10 minutes. Absolutely amazing. There's been a foul here. Jupiter Land with a free kick. And, and I wonder how many. Possibility. Jupiter oh, it's just gone away. I wonder how many Hudonian fans are going to be left. Sitting through the pain well, and indeed, misery. Some of them are already leaving or left at half Heading, time. An early egg, head for the exit, so you don't you're going to have to answer a lot of questions. I have to do a lot of refunds. There's been a goal elsewhere from another penalty. This time it's coming Aaron versus New Mauritius, and it's New Mauritius who have equalised there. And so they're now back on track to go through. Dots. It does also mean that New Mauritius will be at the top of their group as well, unless they lose. Shot from distance from Hudonia goes just wide. I think if Hudonia do get a goal, I think this will be a consolation goal. Early stages of the second half showing that maybe Jupiter Land have just took a step back a little. Oh no, shot there. Well. As soon as I say that, they had a great counter-attacking opportunity there with Kerma Gowan. Hit it at the keeper, and he saved it, and it went off towards his left. Um, but until then, it, until then, it did look like that they were sort of on cruise control. Autopilot, almost. 
I think they are already on that. I think they're on easy street. And no surprise there. Eudonia shot from distance again goes over the bar trying to replicate what Jupiterland were doing in the first half but to no avail so far. 51 minutes gone, it's still 6-1. I don't think that may either could be the final score or it could actually be just the step, the further next chapter of a absolute horror story for Eudonia but absolute very now. Tackle or comes Jeff. in from Oh, the referee wasn't happy with that. It's Chester Burnett and a straight yellow that's gone out there for Burnett. Um, an instantaneous decision from the referee who didn't like that challenge at all. So that's the fifth yellow card we've seen of the game. Well, fifth yellow card, but it looks like the game's been worth it. But as I said, could this be the... Well, that was the, for the Bidonia player. Yeah, but I think that this... The second half is the next chapter of a horror story for Hudonia. They've got the absolute, ball now. It's an absolute fairy tale story for Jupiter nice. Lights. One, two, That's Mason. The, um, Back to Morris on the right hand side, trying to round the defenders, crossed in towards goal, couldn't find anyone. And it's going to be cleared here by Sean Daly. Only hmm. as far as. Um, Morris and Hudonia trying to get it forward as again offside that time. And well, might be a difficult one to commentate on this second half. <laughs> Such a resounding lead for Jupiter Land. Hudonia, the players looking as though they've well. They're still trying. They are. But only half-heartedly. And then again, they may have cleared the defenders here. They're through. It's with Lucas. He's beat the keeper and it's in the back of the net here. Qtoni have got one back. Consolation goal. I think the Jupiterland defenders had just fallen asleep there. And I'm sure Lee, in fact, you can see him on the touchline despite their lead. He's very cross. He doesn't want that to happen again. Well, he's making it clear in no uncertain terms to his players right now on the touchline that to stay focused. Offside here against Jupiter Land. 55 minutes gone, the score's now 6-2. But I said in normal games, it ain't easy, when you're in a lead that big, it is easy to take the foot off the pedal. And elsewhere, it's Aaron 1, New Mauritius 1, Norea 0, Fools Bullet 0, Norea 1, Gleaser 3. Out of play here for a throw, which will be taken on the right hand side, and it's going to be Jupiterland with a, another passage of play here. And the fans really pleased with this performance. And they're staying till the end, I'm sure. If you don't hear fans, haha, <laughs> not so sure. I think they've still got a flare lit up in the corner of the stadium here. I think that may have just have burnt. Disgruntled fans. And there could be a chance here for Dupe to land. It's crossed the face of goal twice, hit the post, and it's gone out. And it's cleared eventually. It crossed the face of goal twice. Hitting the post on the way out the second time. Until finally being cleared. That could easily have been another goal. Here come Hudonia though. They're trying to get one back. They're winning the second half at least. <laughs> A chance to have on the right hand side that goes wide. I don't want to see what's funny, Nathan. <laughs> Go kick. I'm not done anything. Uh, and it misses the Vidonia players, and there's been a foul given, actually. I'm not sure what that was for. I think it was some some sort of altercation off the ball. It's gone out of play. Vidonia have a throw on uh, deep in their own half. And he's throwing it forward. That was 
Maloney throwing that and immediately given away, but given away in turn actually, and he'd only have the ball back. Straight to the front man, and he's just been felled, and the referee didn't like that. It was a big clattering of a tackle, that one was, and the defender here, he's been given a yellow card. That's Sean Daly this time, and that's the sixth of the game. I think the manager leaves now. They're really going to have to start considering the oversights. fourth of them. No, the fourth for Jupiter then. Well, he's got no more. Well, he's got can't sub all the three players that he had booked because now he's got one that was completely unnecessary. That old bookings that Jupiter line got early on in the game. Oversight. Charles for Hudonia in towards Jesus. goal. Out for a corner. And this corner is going to be taken by Roger Waters. He's been a passenger in this game. Flies in, cleared away. Waters will get it back. Straight in towards the box, no one was there. And in fact, it was headed out of play by one of the Jupiterland defenders. Keeper couldn't catch it. It's out for a corner. It's been taken by Williams. In towards goal. Reaches the first defender and it's cleared away. Not very far. It's back and forward again. And Hudonia now trying to break through the defenders who are stretched here and a tackle in the penalty area, no penalty given no, the referee wasn't even thinking about it and this is going to be cleared now by Jupiterland and it's gone forward and it rolls straight through to the Jupiterland goalkeeper, 60 minutes gone it's 6-2 here to Jupiterland and the game's been over for some time it was over in the first half <coughs> yeah it was Never going to be after that, obviously. It was never going to be a fairy tale story. You can just hear tensions okay. getting a little high in the ground. Oh, and another foul's been given here, and perhaps a kick there by one of the Hudonia players. And the referee is going to give Nathan Alistair, sorry, that's Jutland player, um, David Maloney are talking to. And he's been given a yellow card now. It could have been worse for him, you know, because I'm sure that was a kick that he did towards the end of that that the referee may or may not have seen. And it's going to be a free kick. The crowd went crazy for that, the Jupiterland fans. And you just feel tensions in the whole stadium getting up here. And that free kick Red has soared high and wide. Red miss is descending. 62 oh. gone. It's... Still 6-2 to Jupiterland. There's been a goal elsewhere. It's the first goal in the Norio Fools Republic game, and it's gone to the Fools Republic. So it's 1-0 there. That won't affect things very much. There's a slide tackle that's just gone in there, and we're still going. But the Fools Republic leading, and there's a foot that's gone in here by Chester Burnett, and the referee's not happy. He's already been booked. He's given him a other yellow card, and he's been sent off. And Hudonia are down to 10 men. Their day goes from bad to worse. Huge problems for the Hudonia team on the plane back home, I think, after the end of this game. And they've certainly gone out disgracefully with little time to make amends. And little opportunity now that they're down to 10 men. And so it's Jupiter Land who take the ball now. And it's a stroll through the park for them. Quite literally. Passing it between them. And another foul's gone in here from a Hudonia play. You'd think they'd learn. No, no card this time. And it's just going to be a free kick. Didn't look too bad. In towards goal, in towards the penalty area, and that is cleared quite easily by Hudonia, who are now trying to get forward despite being a man down. We've got a throw here. This is going to be taken by Mason. Doesn't have many options. I think he'll throw it to his left. Throws it short. And it's on towards now right, Richard Wright. It's with Waters now. He's passed back to Morris. Now on to Maloney. Forward here to Mason. They're passing the ball around. It's Richard Wright again. 
Now back onto Mason pushing forward. Finds oh didn't find Lucas. And now it's going to be Jupiter Lamb on the counter-attack. Not very far, however. And he'd only get the ball back again. 55 minutes gone, it's still Jupiter Land 6, 10 man, Houdonia 2. And the question for Craig and whoever else may be here, do Houdonia deserve the 2? Well, your answer is... No! <laughs> they do not deserve Another the 2. Another foul's gone in here, this time by a Jupiter Land player. It's going to be Nathan Alistair this time. And he's he's been given a yellow card. I think that's a bit excessive. This game is turning into quite a farce. We've now seen uh, seven, well, eight players being booked and one being sent off, one of those eight. For a total of nine yellow cards shown in this game. Well, that's a bit of a uh, the game. Seems, it is turning into an absolute farce now. Well, certainly, the, that amount, that amount maybe, of yellow cards. Maybe just maybe both of these teams will be receiving a penalty as a result from these games, financially or otherwise. It just won't do. I think it may be Houdonia who will be seeing the penalty because of them. They, I think they is it they who have the most yellow cards. No, it's actually Jupiter Land, but Houdonia had a man sent off. Well, Jupiter Lamb with five yellow cards and Hedonia with technically four, but one was a second yellow. Well, you've got to count it as a fourth because if that is, there is, yeah. what could be, if there is a kick out as well, and, you know, look over that, and you do see that kick out, if there was, then, well, you know what's pretty well, what is, what is very this good kick. about this stadium here in Rega is that it's very well staffed with stewards and I get the feeling that any unrest here by the Hudonia fans or otherwise um, will be killed rather easily. Yes, yeah, very easily because obviously, you know, any altercation or any sort, any description, you name it, stewards will probably, hopefully, hopefully have that under control. But I don't think there'll be any problems after this. I don't think. You're watching oh. Hyper World Cup action. Day 15 here at the Hyper World Cup. It's been a fantastic game apart from the incidents that we've seen so far. It's certainly been high octane all the way through. Now it just seems that we've got just that little bit of a lull. But it is Jupiter Land trying to make the gap even wider again. But... Eudonia have the ball back now briefly and yes they've still got it, they're down to 10 men after a red card not so long ago it's Chester Burnett who was sent off people who've been booked so far, Maloney and Morris for Eudonia, for Jupiter Land it's Daly, Alistair, Kennedy, Miller and Reed. so now it's going to be a throw here for Eudonia on the right hand side it's going to be an opportunity here for Mason to whip it in but there's no one waiting in the box. Mason's got it back again. And now one or two players are making runs in there. But the delivery didn't come. A throw here though. Because of the dispossession there. And the ball slid out of play. The rain stopped by the way. It was pouring down at the start. But Hudonia retaining the ball right now and trying to push through. Oh, they've beaten the offside. No, they haven't. It is offside. Did wonder about that then. And Hudonia have the ball again, would you believe it? And now they're trying to get through here with Eugene Watts. Will he slip past the defenders? No, has to pass back to Lucas, who passes back in turn to right. And they have to start again. Miller. Now on to Mason. This is for Hudonia. And now it's back to the defenders. They're just keeping the ball really. Won't achieve anything, but if you're Hudonia, 
you got to fight really hard till the end, to be honest. Nothing to lose at this point. Show the world what you can do. I don't feel they're doing that right now. Here's Jonathan Miller for Hudonia. They're just keeping the ball. Maybe that is their best attribute. Maybe that's all they can do. That's positive. And Dupesland have it back now. And they're sending lob balls forward. And it's worked for them. And there could be a crossing opportunity. Doesn't find its intended target. And Hudonia will clear it away. They got back quickly to be fair. But Dupesland have it back again. Here they come now. Nope. I've lost it here. And Hudonia now trying to come forward again. Here's Reed. He's going to pass back now to whoever it was, I'm not sure. And now it's Jupiterland who have it in their own defensive third. After 73 minutes, still 6-2 here. Elsewhere, it's Iran 1, New Mauritius 1, Norio 0, Fools Republic 1, and Oria 1, Galisa 3. Don't forget, if New Mauritius happened to lose that game against Aaron, they were losing until just after half-time when they scored a penalty. Um, Jupiterland will top their group if New Mauritius lose. And the score here stays the same, and, and Hudonia don't get any more back. Fools Republic only needed to draw, so they're winning right now, and they're going through. And Gleesa, at that current score, they'll be joining them in the knockout stages. Uh, that does mean that the Fools Republic will probably finish top. And they will play, as it stands, they'll be playing New Mauritius in the next round. And therefore Jupiterland will end up being put up against Gleesa. In the actual game, you're not missing much right now. It's descended into obscurity, really, in the last five minutes. After such an electric first and early second half, I suppose that is to be expected to some degree until the late stages when you may see another goal or two pop in. Right now, it's Hudonia controlling play, but I have a strong suspicion that's just because Jupiter Land are letting them. Force 13 Live, Hypo World Cup action on day 15. And if you thought this was enough, well, there's a lot more to come tonight. We've got four more games which kick off at 11 o'clock. We'll be keeping you up to date with Jabiru or Jabiru versus Isakrish Territory. Um, if Isakrish Territory get a result there, they will be going through. If they win, definitely they're going through. Jabiru may still have a chance. Um, Kili, who are already through, play Devania, who may also have a chance if they happen to win. And in Group H, it's Haskane versus Tarsonis, which is our commentary game. Uh, if Tarsonis get a draw, they're going through. And St Paul versus Kent. St Paul are already out. And Kent will have to hope for some sort of miracle if they're going to go through tonight. So we'll keep you up to date on all of them games as well at 11.15. And there's been a foul here, the referee's not happy with. And he's given another Hudonia player another yellow card. This time it is, I think, uh, Robert Williams who's been given the yellow card there. So there's another one that's been dished out by the referee.
hugely ill-disciplined. Jupiter Lamb with the ball now. Hemming Hudoni into their own half just like in the early stages of the game. And they're trying to get the ball in the penalty area. Chance and the keeper saves. And that's away. A fantastic clearance. And now Jupiter Land have a chance on the right. 11 minutes left of the game. Oh, and another foul's gone in here. I don't think there was much in that. But Jupiter Land get the free kick. Lobbed in towards the box and could only find the back line of Hudonia. And it's tried, tried to go back in the box again there. And it's another headed clearance. So many goals in this game, you wonder which one was the best. Some may say the finest opportunist shot that occurred for Jupiter Land's third goal, I think it was, when they shot from one of the players, can't remember who now, shot from near the halfway line and reached the back of the net because the keeper was too busy backpedalling. I couldn't make it. Some may say it was the double header, that is to say one of the headers from Jupiter Land going onto another head and into the back of the net for their fourth or fifth. Again, I can't remember which one. Corner here now for Jupiter Land as we enter the 81st minute and time getting short here. It's over for Hudonia. The end of the road is coming up fast. And really, for as far as we're concerned, we're more concerned about the Aran New Mauritius result. Because if Aran were to score right now, or before the end of the game, then Jupiter Land will be going top and will face the Fool's Republic. Uh, sorry, no, they'll be facing Gleeser in the next game. Made an error earlier when I said they'll be facing Gleeser, they'll be facing Fool's Republic if Jupiter Land finished second. which they will, if the score remains the same for New Malicious, who are also going through tonight. Unless they have a heavy defeat, which with 8 minutes, 7 minutes to go, seems vanishingly low chance now. And another player for Hudonia is in a spot of bother here. And this time it's Derek Cole. And the referee's having a chat with him now. And it's another yellow car. I can't believe it. Another free kick goes in and it's out again. So let me just get this one straight. Nearly a goal there for Jupiter Land, by the way. There's been five yellow cards for Jupiter Land. There's been five, well, technically six yellow cards for Hudonia. One was a second yellow. 11 in the whole game, one of the highest totals I've ever seen. The first half was an absolute masterclass from Jupiter Land, especially towards the end when they scored three goals in just in less than 10 minutes and another three goals in a period of around 20 minutes in the first half. But with just seven minutes to go, Hudonia are winning the second half. Because Jupiter Land haven't scored since before the break. But they've got a chance now. And another foul goes in. From another player who hasn't been booked yet. This time it's Richard Wright. And the referee's now having a discussion with him as well. This time, no card. You just wonder what's going to happen next. Hudonia already down to 10 men. It's been that way for some time. Yet the discipline hasn't got any better. And surely the authorities are going to look into that. Throw for Jupiter Land. In towards the penalty area. And Hudonia will be the ones who clear.
Got to tell you right now, at least half of the Hudonia fans have left the stadium. Shocked and very, very angry with how their team have performed this evening. Shocking performance. Shocking discipline from both sides. Put the score at 6-2. And the goals, you can't deny, were very, very good indeed. Certainly the highlight and what we want to see in a football match. Goals and good play. And good play leading to goals on many occasions during this match. No news of anything going on elsewhere as we wrap up group uh, group E and F in the Hypo World Cup. About to come to their conclusion in less than five minutes plus, plus stoppage time. Coming up to the 87 minute mark. And it's still six goals to two. And it's Jupiter Land trying to come forward again. It's with Johnny Tillotson. And he's gone and been dispossessed there by Wright. And now they're coming forward, Hudonia. Finding Wright. It would have been good play, but it was intercepted there. So still Aaron 1, New Mauritius 1, Jupiterland 6, Hudonia 2 here, Norio 0, Fools Republic 1 and Oria 1, Galicia 3. It looks like the group stages have been all wrapped up. We certainly know who's going through, but in what order, still not completely sealed that fate. Aaron may get a late goal but I don't think anything else will happen. And even that may be rather questionable. So here come Hudonia now, trying to get past the defence, and they're not doing a bad job of it either at the moment, but they've just dilly-dallied for a little too long. And it's... Jupiter Land who get the ball back now on the left hand side with Tyler and he's run along the left hand side oh and a tackle has gone in there in the penalty area could have been a penalty and another slide tackle almost went in there the referee didn't give a penalty he's given a corner the crowd weren't happy they wanted a penalty and the corner's been crossed in and now there's a real chance here in the penalty area too many bodies in the way blocked and it's back out and given away here, and it's going to be Hudonia who will clear. And they do. There's been a goal elsewhere. It's come in the Norio Fools Republic game. Not much in this, but the Fools Republic have scored again. So it's now 2-0 there. And they're definitely through. And on top form again there tonight. In the 90th minute here, the referee, uh, the linesman, I think, the fourth official even, is going to put up his board shortly. And now Jupiterland have the ball on the right-hand side. He's given one minute of added time. I'm surprised it's not more with the amount of stoppages we've actually had. But just the one minute here before the end of the match, and we're into that now. Still Jupiterland 6, Hudonia 2. And Hudonia have the ball now for one final attack perhaps. For whatever that might be worth. Maybe just one for the record books. But they've lost it. And now it's Jupiterland who are trying to increase their lead. And they've given it away as well. Full time in the game at Norio. So the Fools Republic have won that one. That's the final score. Right now, 
It's Sudonia who have the ball. And pump it forward there and find no one. Now it's in the keeper's capable boots as it is for Jupiter Land, Jim Robbie. And the final whistle we expect will go at any time. Headed away. And that is full time here. And it ends. Jupiter Land 6. Hudonia 2 waiting for full times elsewhere in the other two games. It's Aurelia 1, Gleesa 3. And actually that one has just ticked over to full time. So we're waiting for Aaron versus New Mauritius into the second minute of stoppage time there. But full time here, Jupiter Land are through. <laughs> Hudonia are out in most inglorious circumstances. Craig. You there? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> well, um, a really exciting game that that turned out to be. Jupiter Land beating Hudoni by six goals to two. It was all over in the first half. Six one at half time. An absolutely crazy score that, that turned out to be. Into the last minute of stoppage time at Aaron versus New Mauritius. They added three minutes. We're into that now. <clears throat> and um, obviously we'll keep you up to date on whenever the full-time whistle goes there. In fact, Aaron are through in on goal with a... There's a free kick here on the edge of the penalty box for Aaron. Just watching it on a monitor here. And it's going to be taken by one of their forwards. Not sure his name. And the referee's just about to blow his... Probably the last chance of the game, this, because they're into the third minute, coming into the fourth now. And it's shall in towards goal. Oh, it's beat the keeper. Oh, my word. It's in the back of the net. And Aaron have scored in the final minute of their game against New Mauritius. And they lead by two goals to one. And we expect the referee will blow his final whistle very soon. But what that does mean is that Jupiterland will finish first in their group. Should Aaron hold on just for a few more seconds after that kickoff to win that game against New Mauritius? That one will be a shock, but New Mauritius are through. But Jupiter Land will end up at the top of their group and will end up playing Gleesa. And it will be New Mauritius who will play the Fool's Republic in the knockout stage. There's full time over there now. And Aaron grab a late, late winner. Doesn't help them, unfortunately. They're not through. Aaron just miss out. It's Jupiter Land and New Mauritius who both go through at the end of proceedings today. Lee. What a game. I thought Lee was here then. It seems he's dropped off again. Uh, I was just going to speak to Lee, but never mind. David, are you here? I'm here, and we have breaking news from over your territory nathan uh easy jet u2 1902 is making circuits near manchester and ports plans to land for the moment developing story uh news item for manchester a plane is making circuits but unable to land at the present time all right we'll keep people up to date on that one Usually these uh, these things don't amount to much, but every so often they do. Uh, David, what did you think of tonight's games? Uh, it's been very interesting, and uh, the uh, winning team uh, will be extremely uh, happy, uh, relieved. Uh, they, they've uh, run their round. And uh, they move forward. So, very uh, good result. But for the loser, well, uh, internal restructuring will have to take place. And when it's a major loss, well, uh, fans do walk away. Mm. The supporters, so, but a good result. All right. Well, and my computer crashed, so oh, I'm not able to look at the um, look at the screen. I'm just reloading it. All right. 
This is Force 13 Live. We'll be back in a few moments. We may talk typhoons again for a while because there is a good 45 minutes until the start of the next round of games, which has been pushed back a little bit to 11.15. Force 13 Live, don't go away. We also have tornado warnings in the United States. Live. If you missed the action tonight, um, two things for you. One, you missed a hell of a lot, and two, there's plenty more to come. Amazing result this evening from Jupiter Land. They were 6 1 up at half time. Finished 6 2. Fools Republic 1, they're in first place in Group F, and they're going through. All the games have been played now, and that means that. Fools Republic will play whoever came second in Group E, and we can tell you that that was New Mauritius because they lost. Jupiter Lamb won, and they will therefore be playing the person who came second in Group F, that's Galisa. So Jupiter Lamb playing Galisa in the next round, and New Mauritius playing the Fools Republic for a spot in the quarterfinals. This is Force 13 Live. We'll be on with the next games at 11.15, but for the next 40 minutes, we're going to be having a chat with the Force 13 team and talking more towards what we usually do, weather. David, hello. Hello Nathan, and uh, the uh, global weather scene is very, very interesting at the present time. Uh, we'll start off with uh, the U.S. Uh, scene. Uh, we have a couple of tornado warnings uh, currently in place. Uh, two have been uh, cancelled. And uh, just uh, viewing the uh, live streaming of uh, the storm chasers, uh, we have five 
currently uh, out. So a bit of activity uh, over there in uh, the Yokohama City, the Dallas region. And uh, but the uh, main interest is the uh, Philippines. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a moment. But since you've mentioned tornadoes, just want to point out there are two tornado warnings in effect right now. Um, there's a tornado warning for southeastern Hopkins County in central Texas, and there is a tornado warning for southern Franklin County. And those warnings are in effect until um, the first one. Oh, the first one is until for the next 20 minutes. The other one is valid for the next just over five minutes. So hopefully uh, we won't see anything too bad. Um, but let's talk about Tropical Storm or Typhoon Melor. Who's screen sharing right now? Is that Craig or? That will be me. Yeah, it's Craig. Yes, Craig and Jesper, hello. Hi. Um, tell us about Melor. Well, first thing is there is eagle-eyed or observed views, whatever. You would have first thing I hope you would have noticed was that. Yeah, clearly. That is no doubt but an eye. There is quite clearly Melor is now could well is now in my mind, or hopefully in everyone else's mind, is now a typhoon. Melor has woken up. Yeah, it's finally opened its eye. That's one eye. Winky so it's blind on one. It's not it's not got two eyes. <laughs> Right. Never mind anyone, eh? never mind. <laughs> but still, there is the eye wall there, the center is about here, so the eye could be either just a quick brief, you know, formation of it, you know, just spin off with the circulation will carry the, the eye and, you know, just put it off somewhere else and it'll, the eye will collapse. And the eye will end up appearing hopefully in the center because the center is there, right where my mouse is, mm. or my cursor is anyway. Um, you can see the inflow is occurring. This is obviously a still image, but you can still see down in the bottom right hand corner uh -huh. that there's the inflow and the outflow, whatever that will be, probably coming from the center. I think that's you can see it there. A little carve in the thunderstorms. You can see it belting away and it will be escaping through the little lower cloud section right before the towers of thunderstorms start to show themselves. I'll try and get the latest imagery loop on it. I think I am able to. Yes. Looping the color imagery because I prefer the colored spectrum even though it's a color spectrum image. Try and wake the actual imagery up. No, get the speed back up a little bit. Right, it's up to speed. Right, so anyway. So, anyways. I'll zoom in. And, um, so anyway, you can see the 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 eye wall. Ooh, yes, that's a typhoon. No matter what, that's a twin. That's a typhoon. Well, there you go. That looks very. It's not confirmed. No, it looks very interesting. It's, right, this last frame. There's the eyes as it began to clear I'd be itself surprised out. Surprised if it's not a typhoon. Um. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yes, there is signal one warnings in effect right now for the island of Samar, which is the one on the very right hand side where you can just about see the first preliminary band of the storm, the most heaviest part yeah, of it area, is just yeah. passing over right now. That's the island of Samar. It's where Hagapit landed uh, last year, around the same time yeah. of year. Show the forecast track a little bit earlier than a little bit earlier in, in the time of year, just by a few days. Um, but Samar right now is under a signal one warning where you are to expect 30 to 60 kilometer an hour kilometers per hour winds in the next 36 hours. I would speculate that it will end up being more than that, yes. And also, just to add out that here is a forecast track, I know there's forecast errors, and that's just completely outrageous. I'll try and get in this one. Here. But even if you look but at here's... the forecast error there, um, there isn't much it's... in the way of the storm moving out of the Samar area. I do think that yeah. signal two conditions are likely, at the very least, and it could be more. Well, there's a direct landfall. There is three. Oh, there's two. Potentially. Possibly. 
even a third, maybe just shy of a third. In fact, it's a track that almost oh. mirrors Hagapit there. But there's definitely a third landfall, possibly in a four, so you could be looking at six or seven landfalls. Potentially. At the moment, from, yeah. But at the moment, as far as I can see, I can only see four. Potentially four. All right, we'll come back to that. There's in actually, a it's all right. There's five. There's actually five. Oh, there's a tropical storm landfall right in a small island. It's near the village. We'll, we'll come Britain. back to that in a moment, Craig. You may, you, you can uh, certainly show anything that you may find interesting whilst I'm talking about the flooding situation in the UK. Um, there is one severe flood warning and 79 flood warnings in the UK right now, which I ought to read out. Um, the River Wire at St Michael's South is the only place with a severe flood warning. There are two flood warnings in in um, the Midlands, the River Vernway at Maysbrook and the River Vernway at Melverley. There are 46 flood warnings in the North East, the River Nid at Hunsingor and Cathal, the River Calder at Horbury Junction, the River Air at Allerton Ings, Barnsdale Road and Properties, River Calder at Wakefield, Fallings and Bellevue, the River Wharf at Bolton Percy, the River Calder at Murfield, the River Calder at Horbury, the River Air at Aceholt and Appley Bridge, the River Air at Shipley, the River Calder at Central Murfield, um, the River Calder at Cooper Bridge, the River Spen from Wilmold Street to Smithies Bridge, including Mills and Works Downstream, Livers Edge, the River Calder at Carlis Bridge and Car Charlestown, Fenay Beck at Spa Bottom, River Calder at Dewsbury, Fenay Beck at Fenay Bridge, Woodson Beck at High Burton, River Calder at Brighouse, River Air at Sovereign Street, the Calls in Clarence Dock, the River Air at Neptune Street, British Waterways Car Park, um, Dean Bottom Dyke and Box Ings Dyke at Kirk Burton, River Air from Kirkstall Forge to wider lane industrial units, including Kirkstall Abbey, the River Calder at Elland, the River Spen and Blake at Beck at Click Heaton, um, Batley Beck at, Bl at Bradford Road through Central Batley, Batley Beck at Batley Carr, tributaries of the River Worth at Grayscar Road to Hebel Row, River Calder at Ellen, North Dean Business Park to Park Road, River Calder at Ravensthorpe, River Air at Gargrave, um, River Spen at Littletown, River Spen and Lands Beck from Nola Hill to Wormall Street, Livers Edge, River Spen and Kanker Dyke at Ravensthorpe, River Spen from Hunsworth to Brooklyn Road, including Victoria Mills, Cleck Heaton, Eastburn Beck at Sutton in Craven, Mid Geldon Brook at Bakeup Road, Walston Water at Tod Todmorden from Shade to Salford, Earby Beck at Earby, River Calder at Brighouse, Worthley Beck from the Ring Road by Cornmill Lodge Hotel to but Lane by Farnley Reservoir. Um, River Calder at Brearley and Lyndon Foot. Walsden Water at Walsden. Cockbeck at Stutton. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just the name. God's Cockbeck. sake, Nathan! <laughs> oh. that was... Unprofessional! Don't go laugh at the word. Whatever the no, place you say. I was. I was all. <laughs> I was decimated by reading out Butt Lane, and then Cock You Beck, started the- oh my and then Cock god, Beck came what along. the heck? Um, finishing the flood warnings here, the River Ouse at York, St George's Field and Riverside Properties, and the River Ouse at Neighbourne Lock, that's the North East flood warnings. There's much less now, we're nearly done. The North West, there's 21 here. The River Mersey at Cheadlewood and Ford Lane, River Ribble at Waltonley Dale Preston, River Ribble at Salmsbury, River Calder at Wally, River Calder at Wally again, uh, Colne Water at Primat Bridge, River Ribble at Ribchester, Pendle Water at Lome Shea, River Calder at Burnley Town Centre, that sounds interesting, Trawden Brook at Trawden, and uh, oh, some more, Pendle Water at Barrowford, River Brun at Burnley, Colne Water at Cotton Tree, Colne Water at Cotton tree again, it's repeated for some reason. Pendle water at Lome Shea, Pendle water at Lome Shea again, repeated, but I don't know why. Cone water at Lenches, Pimlico Brook at Clitheroe, Helifield Beck at Helifield, Keswick Campsite, and English D from Shocklack to Chester. There are also 10 flood warnings in Wales, River Vernwy at Landminech. River Severn at Abermule and Fron, the River Severn at Aberbeachan, the River Vernry in the Mayford area, the River Ridhere at Riverside Terrace, the River Severn at Dolwyn and Landingham, Diffie Valley, Rivers Mordak, Winyon and the town of Dolgalau, Conwy Valley, Lower Dee Valley from Langonan to Travelling Meadows, and that's it. The Welsh pronunciations, I've no idea, so... 
apologies in advance. And just to tell you about Scotland, I don't believe there are any flood warnings in effect there right now. Sorry about the butt lane and cockbeck. Craig. Don't start laughing. Don't. No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> honestly. You completely lost it. No, don't, I, don't, I, no, don't I, go there. I almost lost it at Butt Lane and then cut You back almost came along lost it. You completely I did. lost it. No, no, I didn't. But like, I was holding it together. <laughs> I was. I was holding Boy. it together. Then I was shooting between now. I hope nothing bad comes up. Cock back. Oh my. Gone. <laughs> All right. We're yeah, gone. that's that. Right. Let's move on. Well, we've let's got. Talk, um, even though that uh, there was a slight chance of a blooper. Oh, it was a blooper. <laughs> There's been about three oh, in this broadcast. Say, Martinez, a... Martinez says, Tornado warning in Harris, Montgomery, Waller, and Grimes County till 5 o'clock. I believe that one might be cancelled. Um, I didn't see it on the on when I announced it earlier. Um, Axis for Lena says, New Typhoon, where hit Island of South Luzon in the Philippines? Could do that. If you mean good, yeah, South could hit South Luzon. Um, Stephen says the Ocean Prediction Center has another storm coming close to the UK on Monday at 9:88 millibars. Craig, mm. any ideas? Have you seen that pop up anywhere? Whilst you do that, Martinez says another tornado warning issued for Franklin, Red River, and Titus counties in Texas till 5:15. Central. We'll go to the US warnings in a moment um, after Craig, uh, after I give everyone else a chance to say something if they wish. Yeah, that US, uh, the warning is to the north, northwest of Houston. Okay. In fact, I think there's a tornado warning. F oh, yeah, sorry, that's the same place you're on about. To the rest of the woodlands, I think. There is a tornado warning in effect right now, northwest of Houston. That's what you said, wasn't it? Yes, hmm. northwest. Pretty close to Houston, that. Yes, it is. So, a very interesting system uh, from. Really? Yeah, I'll bring that up. It's taking so long over there, Greg. <laughs> Oh, we've lost him. Yeah, um, let's have some connection issues. Yes. Well, you want me to bring up my screen share? Yes, if you wish, David. Stephen also says right. on another interesting note, a potential 925 millibar low moving into the Bering Sea. Jesper's been monitoring this very carefully. Yeah. Yes, Jesper, to say about you want to... That right now, he says, by the way, Stephen, if it drops below 924, it will set a record for that region. Yeah, that's right. And then... Um... Forecast has been saying basically the same for a few days now. Nine twenty-four uh, millibars as the lowest Blood pressure machine. actually. Yeah, and uh, it's about to move into those islands right now. I actually have some imagery of that. So are we near the peak or? Yeah, almost. It's like uh, six to eight hours away now from the peak. So. Yeah, sounds about right. <clears throat> okay. And uh, just gonna bring up the satellite imagery to him over eight. Yeah, M Martinez says another tornado warning issue for northwestern Harris County till 5:15 central. And I think we've got about 10 storm chasers on the radar, but I think the four, one, two, three are currently active. Four active are Kelly Williamson and Nathan Moore, Mark Dreyas, or Drees. He's down in the uh, the Dallas region. So the three are to the rest of Oklahoma City. 
Yeah, I've got the imagery right now, Nathan. Um, what is this? What we're seeing right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this one moving up. <laughs> Hello, Lee. How was it? And you can see how it's deep in, deepening even more as it moves north east. Moving it to those islands, as you can see here. So it's the last one. Very pronounced. Yeah. So there we are right now. So it's a fairly large center, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's double that of uh, Desmond. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, let me tell everyone about what warnings we have across yeah. the U.S. right now. Um, as I typically do, starting from east to west, there's an air quality alert in effect for quite a significant area extending from just southwest of Baltimore um, towards the border with Pennsylvania and New Jersey, it's northeast of Allentown. Um, including Harrisburg, Lancaster, Reading, Philadelphia, and almost as far as Trenton. Um, there is an air quality alert for that whole area. Hello? Hi, Michael. Yeah, right. That would be Michael. Um, yes. There is a, a small craft advisory along the eastern coast of Florida extending from somewhere, <laughs> extending from just north of Titusville, down all the way as far as the Keys, um, just south of Key West. There is also the same warnings along most of the coast, the Gulf Coast, from the Panhandle of Florida to the border with Mexico, with um, wind advisories, I think they are, along the coast there, extending into, from uh, southern Texas into most of Louisiana and up the Mississippi River. Mm. I've got some uh, updates, uh, U.S. scene in the chat room. We also have um, flood warnings in several parts of eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, uh, western Arkansas, and southwestern Missouri, um, with flash flood watches across the board there as well, I think they are. Of course, there's that tornado warning, which we'll keep you updated with. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, we also have, um, oh goodness me, we have other things going on, but Michael, go ahead whilst I find out what they are. Uh, just to say, have you read any of the comments yet? Which ones? Uh, recent ones from Martinez, Julian and Stephen P. Straw. Uh, yes. all saying, uh, yeah. tornado warning issues. There has been. Been. There's a dense fog advisory in effect for most of western Michigan over Lake Michigan for most for the most part with gale watches in effect for um, the area of Lake Huron that sort of like digs into Michigan so to speak. Um, I'm sure it's got a name. Uh, those those um, dense fog advisories are extending into part of the border region between Illinois and Wisconsin with some flood warnings in the area as well for several locations. There's also a gale watch in effect for the northernmost part of that other lake. I think it's Lake Superior. Is it up there? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> um, we also have winter weather problems going on in western Kansas. We have some winter storm warnings extending into the southeastern and south central parts of Colorado and in the mountains and also in the northeastern part of New Mexico and the very northern tip of Texas and the very western tip of Oklahoma. So we sort of painted a little uh. polygon there. Um, and with winter storm watches all around, well, okay, winter weather here we go. all around the um, surrounding area and in western Nebraska, southwestern uh, Dakota. Nathan. David. Oh, Michael, what? 
Uh, Joker head, Dave. Okay, okay. Um, just to say as well for guys that um, haven't been watching uh, storms earlier, um, Bahali has now dissipated um, out in the South Indian Ocean. Hopefully, um, the South ha Southern Hemisphere should liven up pretty soon. Um, and also, I'm just looking at the tracker as well, guys. And it still has Malor at a tropical storm. Uh, 30 knots at 1000 uh, HPA uh, and Malor 982.55 knots. Location 11.5 north 131.2 yes, it's at least east strong. and Craig, the South Pacific, the Southern Hemisphere is about to fire. I have uh, breaking uh, news from the Australian Weather Bureau. They're now monitoring the uh, South Pacific region. They have a 1,008 HPA low on their radar located near 14 South 169 East. Uh, just to say as well, a um, bit of an unrelated note, but um, we know that we're all big here at Force 13 on football. Um, yeah, just to say about the results today, um, when Norwich played Everton, uh, ended up 1-1. Uh, Crystal Palace played oh. Southampton, Crystal Palace winning 1-0. Man City played uh, Swansea, winning 2-1. Sunderland played yes. Watford, losing to Watford 1-0. Uh, and then West Ham, Mike, I think. Stoke, <laughs> I don't know. I'll just say as well, West Ham... Uh, Drew with Stoke nil nil, and yeah. finally, Bournemouth um, beat Manchester United two one, oh, and that's gone. Uh, and let's just say to the league table, I'll say what's moved around okay. a little bit. Man City really? take the top, yeah, no. Man City take the top spot, um, just over on goal difference over Leicester. Yeah. Leicester dropped down to second, uh, still still with also thirty two points. Uh, Behind on goal difference, Arsenal 30, uh, 30 points uh, down to third. No Watford goal, are up sorry. to seventh um, with um, 25 points. And West All Ham right. are down to eighth with 24. And also Liverpool are down one as well. And Bournemouth are actually up in the league as well. They, are, they overtook Chelsea. <laughs> Yeah, he did. <laughs> My mate's not going to be best pleased about that. No. Axel yeah. Galena says, Severe tropical storm Malor will hit at Sorsogon on December 14th at night. Many people having an evacuation in Bithol region, I think it is. I don't know about the pronunciation on that at all. Um, or whether that C may even be pronounced as an S. So, you tell me. Um... What I do know is that that is unclear at this time where exactly it will make landfall. Some models say some are, some of them a little further north in southernmost Luzon, but um, we'll obviously get a better idea later on. Just want to finish up the US warnings um, because there are lots of winter weather advisories and warnings on towards the west coast as well. Most of Idaho right now, especially to, uh, towards the north and east, is under a winter storm warning extending into um, into western Montana uh, with also, um, oh, what on earth is that? Winter storm watch is in effect for most of that state. We also, I think, have dense fog advisories in northern North Dakota, as we do in central Iowa, I think they are. We also have um, winter weather advisories in most of the eastern half of Nevada, um, with high wind warnings in the south into California, with winter storm warnings that have been in place for some time in easternmost California towards the north, with lots of wind advisories towards the northern part of California as well. The flood advisories, flood watches, I think they are in the southwestern flash flood wa watches in the southwestern part of Oregon with the odd flood warning here and there check locally um, with winter storm warnings in effect for parts of the central corridor of Oregon into Washington and towards the east of Oregon as uh, well there is also a hurricane force wind warning just off the coast of northernmost Washington uh, just to say as well um, also a bit unrelated as well. Uh, the Gemini 2015 uh, meteor shower, um, <coughs> sorry, um, is currently 
is currently going on. Um, expected to peak between tomorrow and Monday. Uh, possibly seeing, as I said, at its peak, um, you can see up to two meteors a minute. Um, so just keep your eyes, keep your eyes out for that. Hopefully, you could uh, be able to see some nice uh, meteors. Uh, it's only in the UK, I think. Uh, other locations should see this. Um, and also, it's, the moon is going to be on the other side of the um, Earth, like on the sun side of the Earth. So, even the faintest meteors will show up um, during the night there. A tornado warning for Montgomery and Walker counties till 5.30 p.m. Central. Oh, my God. <laughs> David, talk to us. Okay, um, I'll bring up the screen share. <laughs> Uh, where are we? Okay. I'm here. I'm just sorry. I'm just uh, two computers and the news. Uh, no, oh, where am I? You're in Australia. <laughs> oh, come on! Open up for me. Okay, here we go. Right. Jasper, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. All right. Well, why not? Because uh, we've got a developing scene, and that low is tracking straight uh, into the Solomon Sea. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, here All right, we'll start off with the uh, Australian uh, rainfall uh, scene. Uh, you can currently see on the screen the... Um, uh, today's forecast. So the main activity is uh, the northern uh, part of uh, WA, uh, the Northern Territory, Darwin, and the Gulf of Carpentaria, the state of Queensland. Now I'll we'll just quickly go through the the daily um, outlook. Now uh, that's Oh, hang on. That's today. That's for Monday. That's for Tuesday. That's for Wednesday. So it starts to develop uh, on Wednesday. And then we have the, hang on, uh, Michael, New South Wales, the Queensland border, the northern rivers of uh, New South Wales, the east coast of New South Wales, and for Thursday, this is where it starts to get interesting. We're looking at uh, free pockets of uh, rainfall activity, possibly up to 200 millimetres for the southwestern region of the Gulf of Carpentaria. The north eastern or eastern uh, northern territory and the Gulf of Carpentaria west coast region. Just got to interrupt you there, David. Martinez says there's a tornado warning for the Red River County for Red River County until 5:45 p.m. Central. Some other ones that I'm oh. not sure whether they've been mentioned or not. Tornado warning for southeastern Hopkins oh. County in central Texas. Tornado warning in effect for southern Franklin <coughs> County. Um, and that's all other, all else I have here. Hey, Michael. Guys. Um, just to say as well, um, that uh, two news stories that have come in um, with uh, a bit unrelated to what we're talking about, but I think this need, does need to be said. Um, come from the Sheffield and South Yorkshire news. A girl 15 dies in Sheffield bus, cra bus crash. A girl has died after two teenagers were in a collision with a bus in Sheffield. South Yorkshire police have said 15-year-old Summer Lee Seymour died early on Saturday as a result of her injuries. The incident happened in Haymarket at the junction with Castle Street at about 1700 Greenwich Mean Time. 
police appeared for witnesses. A 17-year-old boy also suffered serious injuries and was taken to hospital and added to police. There were no passengers on board the bus at the time of the incident, said First South Yorkshire. Spokesman Kevin Belfield said, My thoughts are with everyone who has been affected by this tragic incident. The case, the cause of the incident is unknown, he added. The driver of the bus has not been suspended, the company said. Um, it's quite a sad story there. And also, um, Windstor, Windstorm Desmond, also, almost 10,000 people attend Kokomo Festival to support flood, flood victims. This which is a bit related to what we're talking about, actually. Um, and uh, so almost 10,000 people braved heavy rain and road closures to attend a food festival and show support for Cumbria's flood victims. Organisers of the Taste Festival in Cockermouth said the event usually attracted just 2,000 visitors. Rain fell lo across large areas of north northern England on Saturday with severe flood warning issues at St Michael's on Wire, Lancashire. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Uh, the village was okay. hit by floods last week. Many residents, uh, with many re residents evacuated, Lancashire Police has advised householders to gather at a local pub where they continue to assess the situation. Work has been continuing to, tempor to temporarily fix breach defences in the embankment of the River Wire, but had to stop bec because of continued rain. The uh, Environment Agency said due to temporary nature of the repairs increased river levels, we are concerned about the stability of the embankment. Police and fire brigade may need to evacuate residents for their safety. The Met Office had issued a yellow be aware weather warning. The spokesman said that although the foreca forecaster was not expecting floods as severe as those seen last weekend, it would take an awful lot of rain for there to be a risk of rivers overflowing. More than 75 flood warnings remain in place and 73 flood alerts. Affected areas including large parts of East Lancashire and West Yorkshire. Meanwhile, Chancellor George Osborne has promised a further £2 million to help victims. All right, thank you, Michael. David? Okay. Now, the uh, Vanuatu Weather Office, along with the Australian Weather Bureau, are now monitoring a one. 2008 HPA, uh, HPA low, which uh, makes it uh, north, uh, nearly uh, north of Port Vila at 258 miles from Port Vila. The low, according to the Weather Bureau, it's expected to track in a south southwesterly direction, dropping to 1,005 HPA and be located 96 uh, miles to the north northwest of Port Vila. And that information will be <laughs> updated by the Weather Bureau around 1800 uh, EST. Now, just back to the uh, radar, this is the eight-day uh, rainfall uh, outlook. The top uh, small dot could be the... No, that's not the low. So we've got rainfall up to possibly 300 millimetres across the next, update, uh, next eight days for the Gulf of Carpentaria region. We could actually see a low form in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So the uh, southern hemisphere scene is um, starting to uh, deepen, but um, I'll be keeping a close eye on this 1005 because that might um, uh, at this point in time, uh, there's nothing saying that it's going to change direction to a uh, possibly uh, south-southeast. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that one because that would um, 
if it doesn't change course, that'll bring it straight into the uh, coal sea. Hey uh, guys, just to also That's say as well, um, is that um, another bit of a news story that came in um, about uh, there's a uh, worst affected areas during windstorm Desmond had in included Carlisle, Keswick, Kendall, Cockermouth, Appleby, Glendridding, and St Michael's in Lancashire. Carlisle City Council said that from midnight, busy Warwick Road would be closed for seven hours for the emergency clearance of ruined furniture and other storm debris. Local farmers volunteered to help the council with the clear-up by using their own tractors and trailers. The Met Office said it would rain finally, the rain would finally clear on Saturday evening, especially in Carlisle, but a severe frost was expected. It is predicted in the county it will be light on Sunday, with hill snow later. That's all from that story there. All right, well, we're about to kick off the next instalment of the Hypo World Cup Games. Tonight's commentary, the second game of tonight's commentary, is going to be... Um, it's going to be St. Paul versus... Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong fixture sheet. Haskane versus Tarsonis tonight. Um, and we hope for a good game. And that's coming up in just a few minutes. We'll be back. Force 13 Live, my name's Nathan Foy and we've just had kickoff here between the two teams. Haskane versus Tarsonis is occurring right now and you may hear the Force 13 team in the background every so often as well. Uh, I'll give you team sheets in just a few moments. Uh, first of all, guys, do you think Tarsonis will go through tonight? Uh, all they need to do is win. In fact, all they need to do is draw. <laughs> Consid considering the last game they had, which was barely a win, I don't think there's must have what it takes. No, but we will see. That's the manager, I... Jesper. Yeah. Really, good for them though. Because they're really... Done. That team's Jesper. Jesper is Tarsonis. I think they'll win it. <laughs> and Nathan, I thought my team played really well, by the way, I could talk to you at the end of that. Yeah. Because I had technical problems. So, yeah, my team did really well, that was quite a victory. Fantastic style. It certainly was an amazing game. And I won the group I had. You did indeed, because New Mauritius lost yeah. in the last minute. Meaning that it so, ended up being Lee's team who ended up playing Lisa. The group, so. Played with Lisa in the next round. Is that Tuesday? That is, I think, on yeah, on Tuesday. Next round will be played but on I'm Monday and it. Tuesday. Yeah, I'll block better than Monday, so I'll be glad that. That's right. That's what raining. It's... Sorry. Sorry? It's raining my location. No good. We'll give you team sheets in a minute 
in this game. We're just getting everything sorted here. This is Force 13 live Hypo World Cup coverage until half past midnight. And then after that, we will be talking in earnest about Typhoon Malor. And we begin our 24 hour rolling coverage here at Force 13 HQ because we do have a significant um, storm threat. And also developing uh, South Pacific uh, and the Australian uh, region uh, picture. All right. They just uh, hate the world at Cup Games. Yeah, if someone would like to keep an eye out on the comments for me, that would be much appreciated because I can't always look myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm, indeed. Right now, we're watching Haskane versus Tarsanis. If Tarsanis were to lose today, um, that wouldn't be great news. Um, though, in fact, it would mean that... Oh, that's a tricky one, this. I think Tarsanis actually are already through here. I've just noticed. <laughs> Or is it your math failing again? I don't even know what's going on. I think Tarsonis are already through. No one told me this. Check your math again. Because, um... Oh, no, no, they're not guaranteed through. It's very close, but they're not guaranteed through. They only need a draw today, but even with a loss today, if they, if Tarsonis lose, happen to lose, and Kent don't win, then Tarsonis have a very good chance of going through. Kent playing St. Paul right now. And um, who knows what might happen there. There's been a goal already elsewhere. It's not come there though. It's gone in the other group in Group G. And Jabiru have scored against Izaquesh, which is good news for Killy. Because Jabiru are 1-0 up and that means that Killy will end up extending their lead at the top should they win tonight. As the Krish are in second place in that group. Though not for long if scores stay the same. Especially if Gilly win. This is live on Force 13. Live, which uh, is running right now. Again, I'll give you those teams in just a moment. Almost, almost there. For Haskane, the teams line up as this. It's, um, of course, the manager tonight is Rick Ashworth, the goalkeeper, Dante Pacheco, in the fence. Um, it's Sicil, Greer, Teal and Sawyers. Midfielders, Crosby, Dukes, Horowitz and Guess. And up front, it's Darden and Bender. For Talsonis, Jesper over there is the manager. Yes. And they've all got Swedish names. <laughs> Corner to Tarsonis, by the way. This will be taken by Abel Lund. And that's uh, back to him. Uh, the goalkeeper is Sixten Jansen. Um, in the defence, it's Oberg, Samuelson, Larson, and Carlson. Oh, they're sons. Um, in midfield, Anderson, Holm, Eck, and Lund. And up front, it's Linkfist and Norberg. Is my pronunciation okay, Jasper? Yeah, it's no. fine. <laughs> no, it's pretty decent, uh, <laughs> All right, well, it's um, the goalkeeper's got control Sorry. of the ball here for Haskane. Still early on in this game. It's a live not me to change into the minutes. Coming up to ten minutes. I've not gotten round to doing that yet. Because <laughs> uh, you need to change the live under the latest uh, minutes now, since That's you're... right. That's right. Oh, no, so... This is live. And uh, if you'd like Tarsonis to win, Jesper would love to hear from you. Shot just went over the bar there for Haskane. Decent chance just then that was that went begging. So I guess we wait for the first goal. And here comes Tarsonis now. Hold. Oh. Forward now to Norberg. He's been tackled. He's gone back and got a chance now with Lund on the right-hand side in towards... Oh, just went behind. 
just went behind Linkfist when it should have gone a little bit further forward and he would have been straight in there for the goal. Another chance to cross that. Tarsona supplying the pressure, shot from distance, excellent shot. The keeper parries it over. Some force in that one. And another chance goes wide and the keeper will take this goal kick now for Haskane. So still nil-nil here after 12 minutes. Elsewhere, um, just the one goal. Jabiru 1, Isakwish 0. Killy goalless with Devania and St Paul 0. Kent 0. Justin's team, Kent. He'll be hoping that Kent will do well tonight. I think they can still qualify. Um, yes, they'd have to rely on Tarsonis um, winning and St Paul. Uh, sorry, I'm still in here. Yeah, they'll have to rely on Tarsonis winning, hopefully by a few goals, and Kent winning tonight. So Kent, the fate is almost in their own hands. Should Tarsonis win? Right now, no score. What's the team live at the Hyper World Cup? The final day of the group stages where 32 becomes 16. The, we'll have a break day tomorrow and then it's going to be Monday night when we begin the round of 16 when the first four teams play. Then the second four will be on Tuesday. Um, no, sorry, eight play on Monday and eight play on Tuesday, four games each. Um, and then there'll be a two-day break. And then on December the 18th, we'll have the quarterfinals followed by the semis on the 22nd, leading up to the final, which will take place on December 26th. Corner here to Haskane. That the Boxing Day, folks. Boxing Day for us. And the And Australians. Do you have Boxing Day in Australia? I'm sure they do. Yeah, 26. Uh, yeah. 26. I don't think they have it in America, do they? I might be wrong in that. Yeah. They do? I think they do. Did I I think they still say it? Yeah, uh, yes. I don't think they use I think that they name. I think, I think they call it something different, but, but, but yeah. I was I'm, I'm sure Martinez might let us know if he's still hanging around. Yeah. Also, anyway, how's the game get done? Uh, not much going on at this time. Uh, right now it's Haskane. They're trying to get forward. It's Guess in towards. Almost found Darden. But it's going to be Tarsonis who end up clearing this. And they're just passing it around <coughs> in their own half. Getting comfortable with the ball. And headed forward aimlessly in the end by Anderson. Just helping to get it as far forward as possible to give them as much advantage as possible. 16 gone. Still goalless here. And everywhere else except in Jabiru where it's 1-0 now it's Haskane with the ball they're trying to get forward closing in behind the defence almost getting in behind <coughs> and maybe that's their game plan and they're trying to get it behind again and passing their way through this time but it's Tarsanis who come out on top there keeper cleared but not very far I think he should have better with that and after a deflection, it's gone out for a throw to Haskane, <coughs> which will be taken here by Horowitz. And that was pretty hopeless. Tarsone has come away with the ball, still in their own defensive half, struggling to get beyond there right now, though they did have a few chances near the, near the beginning. Lee, do you want Tarsone to win tonight? Yes, I think. Oh, and through no goal. Oh, hit the side netting. I thought that was going in then. Yeah, I'll take it in How about you, David? Uh, sorry, mate. I'm just uh, focusing on the, uh, the weather scene for a minute. Of course. You keep on focusing on the weather. <laughs> I'd like St Paul to win the other. St Paul? Oh, you don't, you don't fancy Kent then? No. Justin will I be don't. very annoyed. <laughs> I want Jasper's team to win. Oh, of course. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And now it's Haskane who are still pressing here. And crossed in towards goal. Keeper had safe hands. And none of the Haskane players could get anyone in that. Yeah, breaking in, uh, posting from uh, the, the uh, Martinez. Uh, severe thunderstorm watch is current, uh, currently in effect for Oklahoma and Texas to midnight central. Oklahoma? Oklahoma, yeah. Yep, and Texas to midnight. You said Oklahoma. Sounds like hey, Oklahoma. That oh, you to pronunciations. Japan, it leaves me for dead sometimes. You're to Japan, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, it's quite a late you got a point on, point on me, <laughs> uh, Well, I'm new to the global weather scene and even the American scene. I've been following the American scene uh, all uh, winter Chance over here. here in so this, oh, what a terrible shot in the end. Being in such a good position. I'm on a learning curve. All oh, right, excellent. Still goalless here as we reach 20 minutes. And not much else happening elsewhere. I don't know if Craig's still able to speak to us right now. If, I just, if, he, if, he, if, he is, if he is there, I'd just like to ask him about mm. how he thinks Killy will do tonight. They're playing Devani alive. At the same time. Oh wait, I can't stop talking about it. David. Fine, yeah. Is David still there? What, what did you say? Yeah, okay, mate. Uh, just to let you know, Reed Timber's now on the, the road in America. Reed Timber, the lead storm chaser. Uh, uh, yes, it's, it's just yeah, alerted it's me on Facebook that he's uh, live broadcasting his journey. So, it's what I'd like you know. Oh, Chance here, headed just wide. Haskane came very close. So it must be quite a serious tornado threat, David. The three timbers out. And uh, just interrupting uh, the Lanks place. L A N C S over your way, Nathan or Lee. Severe flood warning for St Michael's will yep. remain in right. place overnight. Until oh, the structure so. of the river embankment can be assessed in daylight. That's the Lancashire well, Police. Yep. Well, it's minus two here, so we're not so the, like that. The flood warning remains current until uh, the river embankment can be assessed. That's not good news. No, it is not. But as Northerners don't be talking about anything like that. So that means that the, uh, the, uh, the river bank uh, is under some uh, threat. Yeah, there's been a lot of rain there this past week or so, it's what to say. There's further rain forecast through next week. So oh, I it's not back to the good. commentary. Better, how is it? How's it going, Nathan? Uh, still no goals here. Uh, coming up to 23 minutes. And oh, there's almost a chance there for Haskane. Sit right the window there, we've got four still of the cars. Haskane seems to be knocking on the door. And they're certainly the ones pressing right now. There's Roscoe Gas, he's just lost the ball and that's out for a throw here, which will be taken by himself. He's going to throw it back now to Sawyers. And passed into opposing territory there and ended up going nowhere and it's all the way back to the Haskane keeper in the end. Ashworth, and he's held it and he's dropped it now and he's going to Give it a big old boot. And Haskane continue forward. Or try to. Try to sustain this pressure that they've been building up over the last five, six minutes. Oh, and here comes a chance now. No, it's offside. 24 minutes played. Still nil-nil. No goals elsewhere. 
So it seems like it's going to be a wee bit quieter than the first games that we had this evening. Ah, uh, the first game was huh? Things can change. Just like the weather. You bet. Oh, yes. Yeah. How's your temper now, Jasper? Jasper? What? How's your temper? Okay, now? we've got breaking news out of uh, Lindale, Texas, tornado damage. Oh, what the way we took That's Lindale in yes. Texas. As uh, uh, Lone Star Storms reporting tornado damage at Lindale, Texas. We'll give you more information on everything later on when we talk about Typhoon Malor into our open mic at half past midnight, just an hour from now. It'll probably end up being sooner than that if the game finishes on time when we'll be talking about everything. And uh, you're welcome to join us and ask as many questions as you like. Here come Tarsonis now. Nope. Heck lost the ball there. And uh, a crowd of green Haskane shirts. Just Haskane trying to press forward again. We've sort of set up a bit of a, a rhythm here. I just sort of lost that in the last three or four minutes. And now they're trying again. Mainly exploiting the right hand side. And then passing inwards every so often. And then trying to make a go from it. If they if go of it, if they can't, they go back out wide. Trying to stretch their defence. Just playing possessive football right now. And indeed, they're holding on to it at the moment. The other team can't score if you're in possession. So it's usually a good, a good principle, as long as you can keep it at least. Now it's Crosby. Now it's out, and Crosby will take this throw anyway and it's now with Jukes in towards oh out over there to the right hand side this time to guess in towards goal cleared away could be out for a corner yes corner here to Haskane the corner is going to be taken by guess in towards goal cleared away back out to the corner there and it's going to be a throw here for Haskane, taking no chances, the defender. Tried to find, well he did actually, and there could be a chance on here, no it's clear in the end. He goes out of play, near the centre of the field, as we close in on 30 minutes. This is 4.13 live at the Hypo World Cup, which we are now into day number 15 of. Still goalless here, and only one goal elsewhere. Jabiru getting an early one against Izakrish after five minutes. Escapes in quite a first net. A distant headed effort on goal there from Donnell Bender, and the keeper made an easy save there. He almost made it through the defence though, you know. And Tarsonis will be a bit, a bit wary, I think. But now they're trying to get forward. It's Nick Eck. Now on to Flund. And now they're getting forward on the right hand side. As they've done once or twice already. Oh, I thought he beat the keeper and it ended in the net there, but it just hit the roof of the net and went oh. out. The seeing, seeing double the moment there. But now Haskane retained possession again, straight from the goal kick. So the best team right now, Haskane. Jukes. Has a chance to cross. No, he's been out muscled. 
And it's Tarsonis will take the ball back and now they'll try and get forward. Passing it around actually in their own area. And now they're trying to move forward. Here they come. Oh, and couldn't find the through ball to Lingfist. And it's going to be Haskane who will come on the counter-attack now. Finds Bender. Oh, he's beat the keeper. It's in. Oh, it's in. Haskane, get the goal. Mm. Donnell Bender with a fantastic um, delivery from Darden from behind. And he latched onto it perfectly. And the keeper was sent sprawling. And it's 1 0. <sighs> so the goal here separating the two sides now. And Haskane yeah, trying to keep the momentum flowing. They sent another ball into the box just then, it was clear. And here they come again now, it's Guess in towards only the gloves of Sixth and Jensen. And goals in the game, he's happy to hold on to it and now it's like you know, Nathan. crazy. I just can't go to the two now. Carson is trying to find a response, they've got a throw on the centre line. 33 minutes gone. 1-0 to Haskane. 1-0 to Jabiru. The rest are goalless. Is that bad news for Tarzanis? Uh, it's, it's not good news. Um, however, they will still be going through. They won't be going through in first because Haskane will overtake them with this win. That's for me, it finishes. If Tarzanis get an equaliser and draw, it will end up that Tarsonis will qualify in first as one of the players has been called up here by the referee for Tarsonis after a interesting tackle and he's been given a yellow card that has gone to Troy Carlson no it isn't it's Zach Oberg and that didn't go anywhere a free kick, Cascade now trying to push forward still. And the ball only goes backwards in the end, but they're still trying. And uh, controlling the possession right now again. The crowd are enjoying it. Could be another chance here for Bender. And the keeper saves, it was going wide anyway. And pretty quiet crowd here today. Well, yeah. Killy yeah. up against yeah. Devania. Devania have done pretty poorly. Uh, they drew against Jabiru 2-2. They lost against Sizakwish 1-0. So they out already then. Low well scoring though. No, in fact, Devonia are still in with a chance if they win. I don't even know the really the a draw they lose. Mm, yes, yes indeed. <laughs> right now it's on the left with Tarsonis trying to make progress. Anderson out of play David do you want to mention what you've just uh, posted to us oh that's a tornado damage how would you describe it Jesper I'm oh, sorry Everything Go is Jesper. Just, everything is basically destroyed from what I'm seeing. The house yeah, is... Holy look at that. Uh, sorry, I had the uh, microphone muted. Uh, those two latest uh, images have been uh, posted by the Stormview uh, live team, which is um, 
owned by Nathan uh, Moore. Uh, he's currently, I think, near, near Willis, Texas. And it looks like Nathan, uh, it's on the highway. There's a few cars that have pulled off the highway and a possible tornado uh, looking out through the windscreen. And it looks like uh, there is some um, very in extensive damage in uh, Willis, uh, Texas. And uh, that is a developing story. Uh, there's something else I wanted to mention. Yes, there's been a comment. Baby Boo says, hi all X. <laughs> all right. And Nate, um, David, nice. do you want to send an X back? No, I'm <laughs> sending you this one. Nathan and Lee. Oh, I'm really sorry about that, baby <laughs> Sorry, mate, but uh, I've got there's so much going on behind the scenes here. And it's a lot right now. Here's Haskane taking the ball back, and now they're running forward again. And they've lost the ball. So it's going to be Tarsonis who are trying to move on on the attack. And been felled here and the referee feels that that's a foul. Free kick here for Tarsonis coming in from the left in towards goal, headed away. And now gone out of play, a throw which will be taken by Haskane, didn't see who it came off in the end but referee seems to know and it's now with Horowitz and Guess And it's a corner here to Haskane again from the right-hand side. And that's away from goal now. But they've still got it here. And there's always options in the box there. And another one that was drilled in towards the box. And only found ahead of the Tarsonis defender. We're not far from half-time here. And it's a free kick that's been given, actually for Haskane around 25 yards out towards goal and that went just wide and Tarsonis breathed another sigh of relief still a chance for them to get back into this game a loss isn't the end of the world though it could potentially be if Kent were to win if Kent were to win by two goals, there'll be real problems for Tarsonis if they're still losing. Well, obviously keep you up to date on whatever happens in that game, which is still goalless right now, St Paul versus Kent. Only two goals in the four games that we've had in the first half. It's been a drastic contrast to what we saw in the earlier games tonight those of you looking for storm discussion we will be back on with it at half past 12 that's in 45 minutes time until then it's the hyper world cup action on force 13 live coming up to the 44th minute Haskane still lead Tarsonis by one goal to nil and they've still got the ball here and they look like the better team right now there's going to have to be some Shake up at half time, I should imagine. All Tarsonis need is a draw to guarantee their success. At least in the group stage. And it's rolled out here, and it's going to be a throw for Tarsonis deep inside their own half, going to be taken from the right hand side. It's Oberg who takes it, and now it's with. Holm, who will pass it on to Larson, and now out to the left-hand side with Anderson, 
He has to pass back to Samuelson. And now, oh, good running there from Anderson. And he's passed back again. The whole team moving forward until that foul comes in. And now they've got a free kick as we enter just the one minute of added on time before the end of the first half. And the keeper is grateful to receive that free kick straight into the palm of his hands. Half time is upon us, as it is in the other games. And a rather boring half so far. Yes, that would be a contrast compared to the other games. And we've got uh, uh, a new side to me out of uh, the United States, another aviation uh, incident, uh, American Eagle. And the half time whistle uh, goes here. And you've got David. Uh, Double A four two seven O has been diverted to Jacksonville. Reason unknown. That's an uh, aviation uh, story out of the US. All right, well, um, guys, here's your opportunity to talk about whatever you like to for the next few minutes whilst we have the half-time interval in Hyper World Cup uh, action day 15. Any more news on the tornadoes? Uh, weather update from uh, Stormview Live, uh, severe maps, uh, that's a Twitter account. Uh, new severe thunderstorm warning watch now in effect for parts of Texas, o Oklahoma until 12 a.m. CST. All right, and there is hurricane warnings issued on some of the islands around the Bering Sea. Hurricane force wind warnings. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, it could be up to 75 knots. Uh, we've also got breaking news through the tornado scene. Uh, it's being reported on the I-30 heading east towards Hunt County in Texas. Uh, they're uh, hearing reports of flash flooding and water rescues. Repeating, uh, reports of flash flooding and water rescues now underway in Hunt County, Texas. Those who missed it earlier on, there's Signal 1 warnings in effect for the island of Samar from what may very soon be Typhoon Melor. The Philippine name, by the way, is Nona, um, and that's likely to strike Samar in the next, uh, what is it, 48 hours or so? Maybe less than that. Yeah, it's on Monday, I believe. Okay. Well, we're going to have open mic for a few minutes whilst I take a small break here at Force 13 HQ. So I'll leave you with the team. I'm sure they're more than capable of saying things. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, the storm view. Uh, David. The US uh, tornado scene is actually showing, I think, 12 storm chasers. Out and about. Yeah. And just uh, while we're on open mic for a few minutes, mm. uh, yeah. the Australian Weather Bureau has the low to track into the Solomon Sea. Uh, Possibly within the next uh, 12 hours. Uh, the low is currently located near 14 South 169 East, and on projection, it's expected to be near 17 South 167 East at 1005 HPA. South of uh, south of, of 20 degrees south. Variable winds below 20 knots with slight to moderate sleet, uh, seas. Winds turning southeasterly quarter, increasing 15 to 20. Um, there are two 
troughs you know, currently on the radar, but the uh, significant part is clockwise winds, 20 to 30 knots within 60 nautical miles of the low in the southeast semi-circle with moderate to rough seas. And that information could be updated at 1400 EST uh, via the Weather Bureau's uh, Tropical Cyclone Daily Update. Where was this? Where was this uh, uh, tornado? A tornado, I think, was Willis County. In the no, sorry, Hunt. Uh, we'll start again. Uh, the county, flash Texas. flooding and water rescues is Hunt County in Texas. And I think the tornado damage was Willis, Texas. And we got Martinez says uh, 50 homes damaged in East Texas town from a possible tornado. Yes. Uh, and two weeks before Christmas. Mm. Yeah, no, two weeks before Christmas and we're talking tornadoes. <clears throat> yeah. Usually we're talking about tornadoes maybe in springtime, but not as... not the day. Now this uh, extra-tropical low in the Bering Sea coming up is... Uh, tonight will be southwest wind at 75 knots on the Bering side. Uh, seas of 29 feet, uh, building up to 38 feet after midnight. On the Pacific side, the seas can reach up to 49 feet. Rain and snow could be possible. So, so uh, in a lot of islands around, around there, there is hurricane force winds. It could be uh, that is sustained. Okay, uh, the uh, MO Chasers 96 reporting or uh, posted uh, via Twitter insane tornado near Willis, Texas, just a few uh, while ago. So that uh, that was posted what about 10 minutes ago. Okay, we have breaking news from Fort Worth. Uh, aircraft alert to Fort Worth. Fort Worth units are working an alert to at Alliance Airport MedStar responding. So that's another aviation uh, uh, report, Fort Worth. Alert 2, Alliance Airport Met Star responding. And that's Craig's scream we're now seeing. I don't know if you guys can see it, but um it seems to be showing uh, the storm, which is beginning to form an eye, I believe. Yeah, uh, a lot of thunderstorms developing around the eye, which indicating that it's strengthening. And I can. Yeah, and we've also had a um, a, f a magnitude five earthquake southeast of East Arnon. You only made this three, Jasper. Uh, sorry, Lee, what did you say? I'm just giving you my current temperature, the only made this three. Yeah. But yeah, that way, they're soon out in America, that's pretty nasty. Yeah, so over there. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, Bering Sea, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. Never seen that before. In, in that area. No, I've never seen that powerful before in that area. That has not been a tropical cyclone. 
it's just a regular low pressure coming off of uh, China, I believe, and then moving up through Japan, just yeah. blossoming into this monster. I opened this. I'm just stuff. Dude, I. So. I'm actually checking the weather soon for Christmas now. I'm mm. keeping an eye on that now. To see what's going to be happening uh, for Christmas. Yeah. A few charts will come out tonight, Jess, but the UK will be stormy for Christmas. Mm. Maybe even get some of the white stuff. So. As we, well. We could be seeing actually a. Uh, um, on landfall on Monday from uh, Typhoon Mellor with, with winds of 80 knots and gusting to 100 knots as the forecast says. Cat 2, um, it's cat two yeah. status, yeah. That is uh, forecasted uh, intensity. Yeah, it's kind of a late season typhoon, isn't it? I think it's late season now for Western Pacific. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not very unusual for December storms in the... Uh, it's, it's very unusual. Yes, and we have indeed in best 97W, which I knew was coming sooner or later with... Um, oh, there's a 97W the, as well. Yeah, that's the one behind. It is at 3.6 degrees north and... 147.8 degrees east, uh, and that is just the one behind Mellor. I'd be very interested if that pops up into something. Uh, around. I would say this. If that yes. forms, we could put that Christmas cycle. As of right now, there's no model indicating that, and it's around yeah. 30 degrees water. Yeah, I believe that is 30 degrees or so. So and you see, it's having this basically the same track as Mellor, I believe. I so see. it's even regardless if this one develops, uh, it's gonna have some rain, uh, to the even more rain to the Philippines right after Mellor, if yeah, if it doesn't cur curve out to sea, like Craig yeah, seems to be. Yeah, I would say the gap of development will still cause a lot of rain. Yeah, because Craig thinks it's gonna curve out to sea. Craig thinks that, does he? Yeah, he's No, I don't sure. think so. He kind of shows that with his mouse pointer. Because his microphone is broken at the moment. That's why he cannot talk. Oh, this man. is Force 13 live. And we're you about to do the, second task, the second half here between Haskane and Tarsonis. Haskane lead by a goal to nil. And that is for the next so Yeah, but tasks. around the same place. After the end okay. of this game, we'll have more discussion, uh, open-ended discussion, oh, yeah. actually, on You're right. Great. the situation with Malor and anything else to do with the weather. And the weather's not going to go away. And Nathan, before you start, minus three up here. Minus three in Scotland. Yeah, it's it's today on what the temperature goes down to up there as well. 1-0 to Tasso and 1-0 to Haskane as we enter the second half, of which we've nearly played a minute already. Uh, elsewhere, no goals just yet, uh, except Jabiru 1 is a quish nil. 1 nil here as well, and um, maybe the half time whistle is what. Tarsonis might have needed because the game was getting a bit stale and it wasn't going their way. So we'll see if they come up with anything in the second half or maybe not. Like there are the games, it's, it's very slow moving games, like always for Tarsonis. Foul here and Tarsonis have a free kick. Halfway inside, the the Haskane half taken from distance and it's just gone over the bar. It's pretty close actually, not a bad effort from that. 
sort of distance, that range. There's been a goal elsewhere in the 48th minute at Jabiru. They've taken another goal here. It's 2-0 to Jabiru now against Izakwish, which is rather a shock, but good news for Killy, because that will put them further in front at the top spot there if they beat Devania. Even if they don't beat Devania, they will still be top dogs. Yes. If the uh, Isagris score stays the same. Sonis clearing the ball away now and they're trying to get forward with only one man up front and that turned out to be fruitless on that occasion and it's Haskane who are trying to work the ball into the box but it didn't work out for them either so another um, game full of battles at the moment more than anything the battle for supremacy and Haskane trying to win that right now and the foul's been given here against Tarsonis and there's going to be a free kick taken by um, Dukes and that end up hitting the wall and bouncing over to the goalkeeper 50 minutes gone it's still 1-0 to Haskane elsewhere Jabber 2 Isakrish 0 Killy 0 Ivania 0 and St Paul 0 Kent Nil. Here's Lund on the right. Now on to the Butt Ober. And it's gone back and forward again. And now they're trying to get forward. Almost beyond the defence. Oh, and it's taken out of play. It's actually still in play. And Haskane did a good job defending there. It's back to the goalkeeper who boots it forward, ends up in Tarsonis territory again. And there's a foul that's been committed here. And it's going to be a free kick now to Haskane just inside the Tarsonis half. Trying to spoil things for the favourites as they would be coming into this game as Tarsonis. Even though Jesper may not fancy the chances as much. And maybe he has a better idea of what the team are really capable of. And they've put the ball forward now and they're struggling to get out of their own half at the moment. And we've just... I think there's been a goal elsewhere. Yes, there is. It's Jaburu in versus Izakwish. Jaburu have got a third goal now. So it's 3-0 there. And things have changed really quickly there. And Isakwish are being Demolished. wrecked right now. Yeah, it is. Hash yeah. Hashtag wrecked. Yeah. Oh, completely <laughs> wrecked or demolished, wrecked. I knew you were going there. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the hashtag. No doubt. David, if there's any breaking news, just let us know. Oh, okay. opportunity there for Tarsonis that just came from nowhere. They haven't that free kick ended up in the keeper's hands. Is it far away? For setting live, we'll be taking your questions and comments and talking about everything to do with storms and bad weather coming up at half past. And they end up being slightly later than that. We did get underway a little bit late here. Hopefully not by too much. And it's Haskane trying to get forward now. Oh, a shot from around the 18-yard area that went just east of the post there. And it's going to end up being a goal kick. Tassona's struggling with possession right now but they've 
sent a ball into the penalty area and it almost reached its target which would have been Hernan or Herman Norberg. And they've got the ball back in midfield. Trying to get it forward again. Onto the right hand side with Lund. This is looking better from Tarsonis. The ball gets wiped out from his feet out of play. It's going to be a throw and Ebel Lund will take this into the 56th minute. Tarsona is trying to pressurise the Ascane defence for the first time in some time. Clearance there. And now it falls on the left. In towards goal. Oh, chance. He's slotted it past the goalkeeper. Right next to the post. And it's into the back of the net. And it's a goal here for Malte Lindqvist for Tarsonis. And it's an equaliser. Oh, that's this. Yes, for Steve Yeah. Did you think about that, Jesper? <laughs> that's excellent. That's great, great news. news. But what will happen it's next is the question. Haskane itching to get the play back underway. And off they go. We've got news of a penalty elsewhere. The penalty has been awarded to uh, Issaquish, who are currently trailing by three goals to nil uh, against Jabiru. Could possibly be a way back into the game, who knows? And I'm yet to hear from what's happening over there. I don't think it's been taken yet. I'll let you know. Here come Tarsonis, trying to get forward again, breaking through the defence. Could be a chance. But the defence holds firm in the end. And that really just didn't it's happen. Because we know everything. And a chance goes into the box there. The penalty apparently has been missed. Way. So it remains 3-0 to Jabiru. It's not my top point. I can pursue a missed penalty. And a cross coming in from Haskane goes... Wide hits the side netting and out of play. <coughs> Eight, 58 minutes gone. It's still 1 1. There's been a goal in one of the other games, and this oh, it? would have been bad news for Tarsonis if they were losing, but not so much now. If they hold on to the draw, it's Kent who have scored against St Paul. St Paul nil, Kent 1. If Kent win by more by two goals or more and Tarsonis lose today, then Tarsonis are going out. So that's something that's to keep stand, around. that's not the case, is it? Not right now. No, not right now. And the foul's been given, mm -hmm. Tarsonis have a free kick. They've been looking the better side in the I last think five it's still to ten big minutes. For Tarsonis, Sorry? I was just saying, I think it's still looking good for Tarsonis at this moment. It is right now. Only if they lose can they go out. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many go uh, goals can Sure. Yeah. Oh, another foul's well, been yes, given here. Exactly what Tarsonis with the free kick. Has game players getting somewhat frustrated, you know. And this is going to be a free kick taken by Holm. And it couldn't quite get to Nick Eck. He would have had an excellent opportunity there if he'd have reached it, but it was just a little bit too much. Would have been for any player. It's going to be a cross in towards the box now for Tarsonis, and that's back out. And there could be a chance here. Oh, he didn't let go of the trigger, and the opportunity ran out for him. But Tarsonis still have the ball near the back now. Trying to get forward on the left, really stretching the Haskain defence. They don't look comfortable at all. There could have been a penalty there, pushed over. But the referee's not given it and only gives a corner instead. And there were some protests there. And that corner has gone safely out of play because Norberg couldn't keep his header down. It went way over. Um, it, it, there were penalty claims for Tarsonis. They wanted a penalty. It looks very, very interesting tackle. There's a push, really. And there's another oh, one. And the referee has called him over, the Haskane player, and he could be booking him for that. 
This is near the midfield area. Yes, it's a yellow card for the man on the left, Rayleigh Crosby. 62 minutes played and it's still one each here. No goals elsewhere. David, any breaking news? Uh, no, but from uh, my own uh, personal position and my involvement with uh, radio emergency communications uh, here in Australia, being a uh, national, uh, sorry, senior member of the uh, national body, I am giving a serious consideration to activating uh, the organisation's alert level. Uh, for its members here in the state of Queensland. Due to? Uh, what's uh, likely to appear uh, Vanuatu and also the um, possibility of something uh, developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria or uh, Darwin tracking into the All coral right. sea. We'll talk about that in more detail later. Kai Tobin says hi. Hello. Hello. And we enter the 65th minute here. There's been another goal elsewhere at St. Paul. It's now 2-0 to Kent over there. So two quick goals. And it's now 2-0 in that game. The only game without a goal so far. Killy versus Devonia. 0-0. So how's the situation now that Kent's 2 up and it's a draw in this game? Yeah, if it's a draw in this game, it doesn't matter what the score at Kent is. They could win 22-0. Uh, so I'm just checking there. They'll be going through unless they lose. Right. Right. Fingers crossed, Tarzan. Tarzan's <laughs> had a draw. Or 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 win. Or even one, even. So. Right now it's Haskane who are applying the pressure onto the left-hand side, finding space with Crosby, and he's been tackled by Oberg. Two players who have been booked coming together, and he's actually ran that out of play. So a throw for Haskane just inside the Tarsonis half, and they're going to try and advance on the left. But Oberg halts progress. So another throw now. Right next to the substitutes bench there. And Haskane will now boot it forward. Could be an opportunity here, actually. Going in behind the fence. No, the flag's gone up. And it's an offside. I didn't think it was at first, you know. Uh, I'm still not sure. I have the benefit of a replay here, sadly. There's been a goal elsewhere. And again, it's come at the St. Paul Kent game. And Kent extend the lead again. They're 3-0 up now. They're going for broke. And we've got news. Uh, yes, we have news of a penalty somewhere else right now. Um, yes, um, it is a penalty for Isakrish again. Another penalty for Isakrish. They missed. They missed the first one, and now they have another one. And bet it's good. Running up to it, and it's in. So it's Jebru 3, Isakrish 1. They've got one back. Could save some goals in it. So plenty of goals now, except in one game, and it's not this one. That's coming on. We approach 70 minutes here, just by over 20 to go. It's nine balls so far in these games. Remarkable. Yeah, this can't so is now on the right hand side trying to work an opening. I wonder if they what what the manager's been telling them, whether they should go for a draw or win. But really, I suppose <coughs> it doesn't matter unless they They've just gotta try not to lose, that's all. So I wonder so. whether they will might play defensively for the rest of the game, or, or what? Yeah, look at the back the referee's given minutes. a foul here on the edge of the box for Tarsonis. The offending player's been given a yellow card. It could have been worse, you know. Lenny Sicil 
and the Tarsonis player is down injured. He's getting up now and he's hobbling over to the touchline. It's, I think, Abel Lund who has been injured and he's just on the touchline there. I'm not sure at this point whether he'll be coming back on. Cross coming in from Tarsonis. The play's going on here. Cross didn't find anyone. Trying forward again, but the, Tars but the Haskane defence has a lot of shape. It looks like Lund is OK. And he'll be coming back on the pitch in a moment. He's running towards the centre line. But he can't come on yet. And now it goes out of play and he's back on the pitch. So it's a throw here to Haskane after 71 minutes. And it's still at 1-1. Anything else that goes on around the world, we'll let you know. And uh, we have storm discussion coming up in as soon as this match finishes, which we expect in around 15-20 minutes. And another player goes down here, and the referee doesn't give a card this time, but it is another free kick to Tarsonis, and it's going to be taken by um, Nico Holm. There's five Tarsonis players in the box right now against six or seven defenders. Oh, that's game players who've got back. And the odds there were in the favour of Askane, and so it turned out to be. Oh, and another tackle's gone in here. And it's going to be another free kick to Tarsonis. Just sliding in on him there. So now Tarsonis find themselves just that little bit closer to goal. Interestingly, none of the players have decided to go in the box. And yes, it's played short. Oh, and he's gone down again here, the player. Under, under pressure, under a challenge there, but the referee didn't give anything that time. And it's going to be Haskane who cleared the ball out of their half. And he could get forward here on the counter-attack. No, third away. And a skirmish here between several players trying to get the ball. And now it's Tarsonis who come out on top again. Just holding on to the ball, really. I suppose that's all they have to do for the last 15 minutes. Hello. 1-1 one, one, one will be a very good result for them. Marcel, you're live. This is the Hyper World Cup live on Force 13 Live. Tarsonis with the ball right now. If you missed the earlier games today, let me tell you what happened. It ended Aran 2, New Mauritius 1, which was a big surprise. New Mauritius are still through, however. Jupiterland overtook them with a 6-2 win over Hudonia. It was 6-1 at half-time. Norio 0, Fools Republic 2. That means Fools Republic finished top. And Oria 1, Gleesa 3, putting Gleesa in second, meaning that Jupiterland will be playing them and that New Mauritius will be playing the Fools Republic on December the 15th. That's this Tuesday. Coming up to 75 minutes in this game. And it's still Haskane 1, Tarsonis 1 and Haskane on the attack again. The sun's beaming now, by the way. Late afternoon sun. And now it's Tarsonis breaking through on the right-hand side here. The defender just let him go by, and the man goes down in the box there. I think it was Lindqvist who's in there. The only one in a Tarsonis shirt, but the referee gave nothing and the ball was clear. And it's Tarsonis who are in possession again, trying to get forward. No real what? urgency, however. And they're just trying to round those defenders on the right-hand side. And now it's passed centrally again. And it's lobbed over to the left now. It's with Anderson. Mm -hmm. In towards the middle into the box. And that ends up being cleared away. 76 gone. Still has game one. 
Tarsonis one and that's good enough for Tarsonis. Kent 3-0 up despite that. They're not going through if it stays like this here. And it's a free kick now to Haskane. Tarsonis have got to make it count now more than ever to keep them out. And that's just what they're doing for the time being. Haskane now attacking. Here they come again. Opportunity here on the right. Defence in numbers behind them. And they're not getting near. They have to pass back. And now they're coming again now. Haskane. And another tackle goes in. Um, and a foul's been given against Oberg there, who'd already been booked, but it wasn't serious. And it's just going to be a free kick. Taken from some distance, around 25 yards, and that has gone well, well wide. Oh no, it took a deflection. Apologies. It's a corner. In towards goal and cleared away. Not very far, and now it's Haskane who on the ball again. Might be offside, no. And could still cross it in. And instead they take a more indirect route. And now another chance for the cross here for Guess. In towards goal and cleared away near the line. And that was pretty vital because behind behind Kimmy Samuelson was lurking Eltis Darden. He might have finished things off for Haskane. Just over 10, 11 minutes to go. Yeah, it's good that Davis lost the last bit. It's still tied at 1-1. Yeah. Well, Sal, anything you'd like to say? Um, nothing. Nothing. Why, why we, we, we are like in the foster team chat room and now in the right room? Because I forgot. Yeah, I mentioned oh, that before, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, doesn't uh, matter. Doesn't matter at this point. We will change over after the game. Um, we'll take a short break and then we'll yeah. talk storms in the live room. Yeah. Not that it will be much different for you. Not that it will be any different the for the viewers. <laughs> yeah, for you viewers. No, nothing. Anyway, two minutes or so to go. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very little going on right now, just play switching hands every now and again. One team coming out the other, and then it's the other way around for a few minutes. Not much penetration at the moment. Still 1 1. Reaching 80 minutes now. Right now it's Haskane who have the better of the ball and they try to bring the ball forward there into the penalty area where two of their attackers were waiting but none of them could latch onto it and they almost lost the ball there and they may still do so yet because they've been crowded out by the Tarsonis defenders but somehow they've got round them and now Tarsonis take it away with time ticking Haskane they are in no real danger of going out right now or oh, actually they are pardon me uh, because Kent with where they are um, will overtake Haskane I've just noticed <laughs> oh no sorry they won't they won't uh, if Haskane lose in fact if either Tarsonis or Haskane lose then um, Kent with their scoreline will overtake whoever loses in this game so if it ends a draw Haskane and Tarsonis are going through but if either of them lose the loser is going out unless St Paul get a goal or two back don't see that happening at the moment so to be quite honest it's in both teams best interest right now to remain at a draw but do the players, but do the players know that? And moreover, do the players want this to end a draw? Probably not. No, we need it to end a draw now for Tarsonis. And Tarsonis with the ball now. They're trying to 
get the winner here. I wish you could have the winner here. Yeah. Both teams trying to do that really. Not trying particularly hard. I think they've got more in them. And the keeper saves here for Haskane. So it's still Haskane 1, Tarsonis 1 elsewhere in Group G. Jaburu 3, Isakush 1, Kili 0, Devania 0 in Group H. Haskane 1, Tarsonis 1 and St Paul 0, Kent 3. Time running out for the people who need the goals. Who needs a goal right now? Hmm, no one really. Though Kent would be praying that there is another goal in this game. Oh, and another foul's been given here. The referee's not happy. And he's not doing anything about it, I don't think, except the free kick, which will be given for Tarsonis. And it's not in too bad a position, but it's taken it short. And now they're trying to get further forward. I'm not sure they're going to get further. There's players breaking into the box behind the defence there. And there's opportunity there for a moment. Bullinquist. And... It's going to be a throw now for Haskane into the 84th, 85th minute. Time ticking away. Uh, in the Killy game, Hi. still nil-nil. If Devania snatch a winner in that game, then they will overtake Issaquish and they will qualify instead of Issaquish. For Killy, doesn't mean much this game. They're through regardless, and if Isaquish lose, Killy will finish top, which Isaquish are still losing by three goals to one, and that one was a penalty. So it doesn't look like they're getting back into this game anytime soon either. It looks like we're all done and dusted here. Unless there's a goal in the last few minutes which would put Kent through which Justin would be delighted about. Otherwise, he'll be very disappointed to, be, to have been knocked out. 85 minutes gone. There's been a goal elsewhere, and it's a fourth goal for Kent. So it's St. Paul nil, Kent four now. And it's Haskane trying to get forward. But I tell you something... If there is a goal in this game, these two teams will become bitter rivals. Because one of them will hate the other. And here's a chance. Oh, the keeper saves. It was straight at him, actually. And in, in truth, it was really an easy save for Sisson Jansen. We're coming up to four minutes left here in what is turning out to be a tense end to the game. Most of the fans know what the situation is by now, word of mouth and whatnot. About the Kent score. They know what's at stake. In fact, there's probably a lot of confusion. Well, they Kent don't not get free of it. Pardon? Does Kent not get free of it? No. No. no, did it not? Haskane and Tarsonis, the two teams playing here, are both going through. Unless we oh, lose, you, Kent will take the place of the loser. Uh, right now, done. there has been a goal in Group G. Killy have got a late goal in their game after just 87 like the, minutes. Just like they did against That's very in long. the first game, isn't it? Yes, they seem so to be kings of late, late goals. So, 1-0 yeah. to Killy. And they'll be pleased to have a 100% win streak. They wouldn't have conceded a goal, have they? Can they? I'm not sure they have. I don't think they haven't. They're the only team in this Hyper World Cup that hasn't conceded. Yep, Killy haven't conceded a single goal. They've scored six. Well done, Killy. In fact, Kill. Killy are one of very few teams. In fact, I think the group stage has not conceded. I'm just trying to find out if they're the only team to have not conceded because the Salad Republic conceded their first goal against Cory Hetty the other day so they don't no longer have zero. yet Killy the only team to have not conceded a goal in the whole tournament right now Craig will be pleased Okay. 
89 minutes gone, chance for Haas, Katie straight through on goal and the defender gets back in the nick of time. And you can just tell the noise just goes right down as soon as the chance is over with because of the tension here. And it'll be interesting to see how much time the fourth official puts on the board. How much time left? We're just about to enter stoppage time at the end of the game. Okay. We're just about to reach the 90. The fourth official, I think, has put up four minutes on the board. I don't want to go against me, I'm not too sure. So we're entering what I think is four minutes of added time. Of which we're in the first. Can you hold on now? And it's Tarsonis who are attacking on the left hand side with Anderson. Can they put it to bed? Can they break Haskane hearts should they want to? Well, not this time. Haskane trying to do the opposite here on the break. Trying to send it into the box. Oh, almost reached the target, but coming in at the very last minute was Zach Oberg from the midfield to clear it away from a corner. Fantastic work from him. And now we enter the second minute. The corner taken and headed away now. But Haskane still have it. Here's a chance from distance. Keeper saves. Heart in mouth moment here for Tarsonis. But now they've got a goal kick. We have news that it is full time at Jabiru. They've beaten Isakrish by three goals to one. Just got a correction here. It was only three minutes, not four, that have been added on. And we also have full time at Killy. They've won by a goal to nil and are sailing through with a full nine out of nine. We also have full time in the other game. St. Paul nil, Kent four. This is the only one still in progress. And Kent are just praying that there's a goal in the final minute of this game, of which we are now well and truly in. We're down to the last 40 seconds. And both of these sides will be celebrating entering the last 16, should they not score, ironically, in the next 30 seconds. It's Tarsonis keeping possession, they've lost it, pushed away, and it's now going to be a throw. And time's still ticking. The full-time whistle upon us, very, very nearly. And it will be a great moment for Jesper, and a great moment for the Haas game manager, Rick Ashworth, as they will both go through. And we've gone over the three minutes allotted. Um, there's been some delay to take the throw, so the refs added some more time on. 15 and seconds. Now it's Tarsonis trying to come forward. In a second, there, just and now broken away the other side. Here come Hass Kane. They're not getting very far, and now they're trying to go on the right hand side, cleared away. And we expect the full time whistle will blow at any moment. As soon as Tarsona is clear at field, I expect, as we're nearly at the end of the fourth minute. Which I didn't think was being added. But it took so long to do a throw not so long ago. And Tarsona is just keeping hold of the ball right now. And it's on the right hand oh side gosh. with Lund. Referee looks at his watch. It's gone out of play. It's another throw. The fans trying to hold on to it. But another ball comes into play, and it's going to be taken. That is the full-time whistle, and it ends here with Tarsonis and Haskane, both progressing to the last 16. Fantastic stuff for both of them, and we'll hear from Jesper and whoever else wants to talk in just a few minutes. Storm news coming up very soon as well on Force 13. Keep it right here.
Welcome to Force 13 Live. My name is Nathan Foy, and this is this is us live talking about Typhoon Malor and other weather discussion. Joined by the Skype team. There are four of us here tonight. There may be more soon, or less. Hello, guys. Uh, Hello, Nathan. Uh, from Dave and over here on the east coast of Australia. Yes. Uh, Lee's also here. Yep, how was it? Marcel and Jesper. <laughs> yes. He's on the slap, Marcel. Ace. Marcel is distraught. Oh, you know, yeah. after losing the uh, World Cup. And that right, Marcel. <laughs> I was really surprised by this one, though. I really would think that would end like um, zero to one to uh, the other team. Hmm. So. And here I am. Hello. You can see me now, everyone watching, uh, because there's nothing else to look at at this time. I guess I may as well show myself. This is Force 13 Live. We're talking about mainly Malor, uh, tropical storm, or typhoon Malor. It depends which source you go by. Um, technically, according to JMA, it is a typhoon with 75 mile an hour winds. Uh, they, they don't say typhoon, they say severe tropical storm. Um, it looks like a typhoon on the satellite imagery. I don't know if anyone's able to show that on the screen share right now. Um, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but yes, it is. It's potent and it's growing uh, in strength more than anything. Uh, there's a signal one warning in effect right now for the uh, for Samar, the island of Samar in the Philippines. Um, there are no other warnings right now for any other locations, as far as I'm aware, right now. Uh, any questions for us? Let us know. Pardon? Very severe frost. Yes, it's quite ever. Uh, Roads look nice as well. David, is there anything you wanted to say just then? Uh, Nathan, we've got uh, 97W on the radar now. Mm, yes. 97W, uh, 28W, the middle law. And I'm waiting with interest to see whether we might have uh, a uh, South Pacific system on the radar by uh, 11, uh, I'm going to take a guess with the uh, international time, 11 UTC. Hmm. Now the Philippine name for this storm I must also mention is Nona. And there it is on the right hand side. Uh, it looks already like it's really getting its act together, Jasper. Yeah, you can mm. almost hear uh, Craig has been um, <coughs> telling that for a long oh, time. Oh, yes. That, uh, an eye is forming there on the last frames. Definitely. Springs. Forming, and formed. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And then um, it's in a, a lot of thunderstorms around the center, very close, which again indicates strengthening. That's right. Oh, interesting stuff. Uh, not good for the Philippines right now. No. That time of year no. again. Yeah. Uh, David, would you like to um, remind everyone about what's been going on in the United States today? Uh, the United States, we have... Uh, supercells have erupted over the eastern Texas pan uh, Panhandle, targeting Cloudon. Uh, we had an aviation uh, incident at the Alliance Airport. First responders uh, currently on the scene and uh, recapping powerful uh, tornadoes tornadoes in Lindale, Texas. David, uh, I just want to mention something right now. 
There is a severe thunderstorm warning for northwestern Donley County, uh, Gray County, Real northwestern Wheeler County, southwestern Hemp Hill County, and southern Roberts County, all in the Texas Panhandle right now. And there's also a severe thunderstorm watch uh, in effect for several locations around Texas, um, sort of extending in a north to south strip from sort of central west Texas area. Um, trying to find locations, I'm obviously not familiar with the area. Um, south of San Angelo, Sonora I think it is, um, extending from around there um, north including Midland, uh, I think that's a Brownwood on the right hand side extending all the way towards the north the northern border um, into southwestern Oklahoma as far as Clinton. Uh, what we're looking at on the screen right now? Just going to look at the model for the forecast where exactly the landfall will be. And that will be middle Yeah. And this will be at um, actually I think in 30 hours according to GFS about yeah 30 to 36 hours out And then we have the humidity map, um, which I'm going to show also run on. Um, it's a little bit dry in the Philippines, but I don't think there's going to be a problem for this storm. But it's pretty small, actually, and it's already um, so large that it can handle it. But yeah, we probably a Category 2 system, I'm not sure. But then it's going to go over the Philippines and stall a little bit before going up to the north and then mm. disappear. And then the uh, latest uh, Typhoon Warning Center's uh, chart uh, the track, uh, I think the Warning 6, uh, once it gets into the South China Sea, it's going to it's going to make a very interesting uh, turn to the what yeah. south uh, southwest. When I'm having this screen up, I can show that. Yeah, when it has passed the uh, Philippines, it's going to move. Uh, well, the remains of it is going to move to the south. I believe it's yeah, right here, and. Um, for some time just remain there and not doing much and then eventually moving to the Indian Ocean. Yeah, you can see right here. And moving away to Sri Lanka. It's a tropical storm and then also in to India. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lee, are you here? Oh, I'm still here, yes. Yes. Uh, anything that you'd like to mention about anything that's going on right now? Uh, wait a minute, I can't warning that's just been put in place for Scotland, actually. Oh, okay. And the northern half of England as well. Uh, there'll be a severe frost this evening. It's will last uh, right up until actually midday. Midday uh, tomorrow. Yes, so current temperatures just now are uh, minus three. It could go down to minus six by the end of the, the evening. Uh, and then as the day progresses, we won't even get above zero until lunchtime. Uh, so the roads are going to be really icy uh, first thing in the morning. So uh, people will need to take extra care on these roads. And uh, I'll mention later on as well, Nathan. Uh, as we go into the evening, a band of rain will move northwards uh, from the south, and the minute this bangs into the cold air, we will get 
rain, it's sleet and snow coming out of it for the time. A band of uh, rain? A band of rain, it moves north. What sort of music do they play? And it bangs into the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? A band of rain. Oh, you're taking that. <laughs> I get your joke, I get your joke. <laughs> uh, a band of rain, sleet and snow. Uh, then that band of rain moves north, it'll bang into the cold air, turn to snow. Yeah, all, already, but it's, this, it's been, already it's been reported to be minus five at Tullock Bridge, which is just Whoa. east of Fort William uh, in the yeah. islands. It's also minus five right now at Cairngorm Summit. Well, as I said, it'll be a severe frost this evening. Um, um. Yeah, but yeah, tomorrow cool. there will be snow for a time uh, before it turns milder into Monday morning. You're just trying to find the lowest temperature at lower levels. Uh, I can see minus three at Aviemore. Yeah, it's minus three currently here at the moment, and I'm in the Motherwell area. Minus three at Strath Allen as well. Um, yeah. I am back. And the closest place to you is currently at zero, but that's near Edinburgh. Is it? Well, aye, the capital's only zero just now in Edinburgh. Mm. Yeah. Hi Marcel, how are you doing? That's really what's happening in there. It's quite a contrast, actually. Minus five in Scotland, and then I think, 13, I think it's thirteen at London. Thirteen in London, and That's in quite a difference. Isle of Wight. <laughs> Amazing. Quite a contrast, isn't it? So basically, that's the weather. So basically, there for the next twenty-four hours or so. All right, Marcel. Anything so. you'd like to talk to us about this evening? Melor. Melor. Take it away. I... I... I will go to Ramp. <laughs> You'll go to Ramp. To Melor. Oh my god! Melor is forming a knife. Yes. Yes, it is. I think that Melor is now a typhoon. Oh, no doubt about it. Nice from Colin Yes, indeed. I can see. Yeah, all right. Mular is now a typhoon. <laughs> okay. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center has a two uh, steady intensification peaking at 80 knots. Am I right on that point? Peaking at 80? Oh, yes. Well, could it be knows. higher? Oh, it could be higher. Let me now actually tell you what the latest models say on the higher end of the scale for Milor. The latest models... Oh, actually, they've changed. Because the last run from the HWRF said that Milor would peak at 140 miles an hour and make landfall at that intensity, but now they've scaled down rapidly and we're looking at our maximum of only... 100 miles an hour um, so it appears that it's much less bad however I'm really not sold looking at the satellite imagery looks really good yes and, al and also the, uh, the Typhoon Warning Center uh, just picking up on an earlier point about a uh, eye Possible formative eye feature has been observed in the EIR indicating an intensification trend may now be commencing. Mm. So it's now, well, that uh, imagery is now showing that the eye has formed. Okay. And wave height is 20 feet at this point in time. So the next uh, update is going to be very interesting. Yes, indeed. Um, obviously, it's going to be potentially a bad storm for the Philippines yet again. However, it doesn't appear that it's going to be as bad as Hagapit, at least. At least not yet. Sometimes the weaker storms can have a worse effect. And yes, we do expect landfall in about 30 to 36 hours. Not long. And tornado damage has been reported the Eagles Peak area in North Lindale.
So it'll be a clean up for days, so they've lost their homes leading into the, the, the Christmas. Well, it's the same in Cumbria, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it'll be uh, interesting to see what uh, what uh, happens with that weather. What happens uh, with the weather? With the... <laughs> <laughs> the... event and we'll definitely cross there um, later tomorrow, later today, so that's it. So that's another problem. Certainly is. Um, Are David, you cold tonight? Who? It's, it's me. It's for yeah. you, David. Th 35 Fahrenheit here. What have you got a jump on? A cardigan on? Yes. It's cold. It's... Uh, that's, 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 that's my typical demeanour. It is I winter here, the, David. I thought the, you, you had a set temperature, so you it, must be my, feeling cold. In the cold. room. No, it is, it is 77.5 in this room right now. 25.3 Celsius. And you got a cardigan on? Yes, just like you were when it was 26 outside, like you said. Don't worry, I've, got, I've, I've still got my jump on because yes. it, it's raining and drizzle. Oh. And I've got this uh, cold wind coming in through Something the door. Something I really like, though, David, is drizzle in a warm place. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it's minus two or two right here. Yeah, that's not a warm place. <laughs> oh, All right. Um, yeah, cold night. Cold night in parts of the northern hemisphere. Okay, nice. Yes. So, um, any more word on Melor right now? Um, any observations? Could someone screen share it again, perhaps? Um. Yes. Hmm. I knew I could rely on you, Marcel. <laughs> You're always up for volunteering. Okay, here's one bit of news for you, Nathan. And post it to the, the chat room, mate. I will look to add the tea. The other chat room, not this low chat room, Nathan. Yes. Tropical storm and lore. Lore. Yeah, lore. Hottie Head and Bangle. ADT. Yes, that's in Wales. Yes, so uh, trains are now A back on normal schedule after the flooding. ADT says that Typhoon will drop the storm lower as a 55 S1995 mailbox and 50 knots storm. No, and this is still going, I think. Malor. Yeah. And it, a Ram Turtle, Nathan, has uh, posted a comment or qu question about the Hyper World Cup. Mm -hmm. Oh, breaking news. Um, ATCF confirms that Malor is a typhoon now with a wind speed of. 80 miles per hour. Going up. Breaking news. 80 miles an hour. Breaking which means, news. Which means that they've just updated. That's 970. Yes. Right, so they've just updated it in the last, what, 10, 15 min minutes? Yeah, it must have been recent. Yes, because it. Yeah, I'm not screen sharing the animation again for the large storm now in the burning burning sea. Yes. And, um, and it's really beginning to cross over the islands right now. Um, and uh, the wind's beginning to increase. It's right at the south. The worst the winds oh, is at the south of the low pressure system. Mm. That's so. interesting. The side that doesn't have all the stuff on it. Yeah, it's always it's always to the south. Oh, uh, basically, you can look at this one. Here you can see it's to the south. The worst winds, and uh, according to this one, it's picking up 126 kilometers per hour sustained. That's why there's hurricane force wind warnings. 
Yeah. And this is going to be in the right side because it's going to move um, to the northeast. So the worst winds are going to be on these islands right here. I can show on the GFS. Here is purple. And this is basically around 75 knots. And then it will continue to move uh, north and die off pretty quickly. Um, Jasper, can you bring out the uh, Earth wind for the uh, South Pacific region? I think. Uh, yeah, just, just, just see if it picks up that. Any, uh, the bureau has the one thousand and eight over the next. Uh, 12 hours dropping to 1,000, possibly to 1,005, just to the um, oh, north of Vanuatu. It's supposed to cross to its south. Right here. Uh, to but Can you just zoom in a bit? Yeah, I think so. Uh, really. is, is it the uh, models you want me to look at or? No, the, the, go back to the Earth wind one. Oh. And just zoom in. Okay, I now just to. Now, where exactly? Just to the north of Vanuatu. Where is that? <laughs> just uh, move your course. No, just go back. Move your course uh, near Caledonia. Okay, now over to your right. Over now, due north. Here. Here. Up. No further. <laughs> About there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and that's gonna become what around there. Well, it, there's the one thousand and eight low is supposed to be there tracking close to Port Vila. Which is Vanuatu. Okay. It'd be about eighty, I think, about eighty miles to its northwest. But that one's not actually showing up the any rotation, is it? No, it doesn't. Maybe at higher higher pressure. Nothing on thousand. All right. What is it? Why? With that, uh, just. Bear, just leave it there for a minute. I'll, right. I'll just go back to the weather bureau and uh, give the coordinates. And you've got the green circle there. Yeah. It's okay, the it's uh, 14 south, 169. So if you just move up. Okay, just up a little bit more. Now, just. Okay, 14. Uh, 14 South 169. What is it we're looking at here? We're just looking at the Earth uh, Net. I think it's Earth Net Link, and we're looking yeah, yeah, at yeah, yeah, but... wind direction. We're looking at uh, just uh, trying to see if uh, this uh, picks up the uh, 1008 low, which Doesn't is expected. Like. To... No, maybe, so. Maybe at 850. Oh, I'm trying to 850. No, nothing. Uh, you want to see some spin on it, basically. You know what I say? Uh, the clockwise winds within the. There is uh, two. Southeast semicircle. Yeah. Well, at uh, 700 millibars, there is two right here. It's spinning counterclockwise. So, it's not really showing it up, is it? So that's How about a satellite? What about a satellite image? Image. You got a live satellite? Uh, satellite one. If I oh, move we'll the have uh, Skype thing, you can actually see it on the uh, streaming page right now. There's a little thing down towards the bottom, right on the Himawari full disc there. 
Um, it's very, very little. Not much of a disturbance. <laughs> yes, well, I say it's, it's expected to drop to 1,005 and be but, located yeah, 17 but, south, 167 east. Look at, look at the centre of your image there as well. That Invest 97W also looking like something really, really interesting. Um, could develop into something significant that as well. And that was uh, 1,010 HPA, 15 knots, and located 3.6 north, 147.8. So it yeah. is beginning to become more clear now on the latest image of Mellor. Yes, uh, the next update's going to be interesting to see what, uh, what the uh, radius mm. will be. Maybe if I can take a loop. I'm already showing a loop right now. <laughs> oh. Never mind then. I wonder if you could get a close-up on the Himawari there in the uh, colour version. I'm not sure. If you, I'm not sure whether mm. you can zoom in. Uh, can you zoom in on that, Jasper? Yeah, on it's the... just those select ones, isn't it? Well, you can zoom in on that image, yeah. This. this take, a, take a look at the Typhoon if you can. I just want to see what it looks like in that latest image. There you can see it. Mm. There we are. Marcel, what do you think? Mm, what of what? Uh, typhoon Melor, Philippine name Nona. It's it's very it's, it looks very good. Right. Yes. Yes, it yes, looks so very good. Signal one warning still still in effect for Samar. The island of Samar in the Philippines. Samar. Yes. Um I expect that those will be upgraded at some point. And Jesper, explain to me what that was. That was what you were just it's looking just, uh, at. Just the low pressure system that is it's over that Bering storm. <gasps> Look at that! It's enormous. They'll be want to. They'll want to name that one next. Hopefully. <laughs> um, they seem to name everything these days. This one. I the Alaskan see. Weather Service will Here. name the storms. The oh, <laughs> the so their colour. <laughs> They'll name Bering Sea Storms or something. No, you don't give me ideas. All right. This one is nothing compared to the, that center. Mm. <laughs> Look at that. This one can fit inside that one. <laughs> well, you know, that everything goes large in the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It does. Uh, uh, I have also... Um, Load up and loop on that. Let's see if can go back to Ram Turtles having he's having having a trouble with this hyper world <laughs> theme. Okay, what Let's see. just gonna wait for it to load. Whilst we wait, we can look at this scene again, and you can compare this, Nathan. Um, how big this is compared to um, the Typhoon. Hello, Marcel. Hello. You being sick? No, I am not sick. That sounded like you were. Well, it's smaller. <sighs> Compared to Typhoon, oh good lord. <laughs> Look at that, so small. Tiny. Yeah, but not as tiny as... Uh, no, just kidding. And there's the invest down there as well, that's... If it had a proper Heavy. circulation, it would be much larger. Yeah. But anyway, I'm just gonna show this now. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh, it's been progressing over the last day. <laughs> so. Temperature still dropping at 413 HQ. We're still above freezing. 35 the current temperature here. Our, our low so far, I think, for the year has been 29. We've fallen below freezing just once. And it's December 13th. <laughs> Lee, are you still here? Yeah. 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 What, what do you yeah, think I'm of those happy. stats? Well, it's only frozen once here at HQ, and it's December 13th. Uh, I'm not surprised it's only frozen once. This was the best day we had. Yeah. During the autumn and things like that. Um, we're still well below freezing beer. Maybe three and a half now. Good lord. So, and I've just looked outside and the place is really frosty. Yeah. Quite nice actually, I just wish yeah. I could take a picture. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll tell you the Christmas broadcast next week, um, uh, Nathan as well. I'd like to do that as well. I think it's going to be interesting over here too. Yes, I think so, dear. I think so. But I'll, I'll talk about the Christmas broadcast next week. Too. It's having a little bit, a little bit of spin to it. The other in this. Yes. That one's definitely low, isn't it? And here, of course, you can see him lower. Oh, well, I welcome to the festive period of the. As well. And then a few. We have to say that uh, as well. Extra tropical low. Nice image you've been showing on the stream here. Yeah. Pardon? It's, it's good image you you're showing on yeah. the stream of Typhoon Milo. And the Invest, you can see at the bottom. And in, I think the Invest will develop into something. Oh, I think it looks very impressive. Let me try and yeah. find some models right now. And you see, see if there's anything going to say. Wonderful, you've got a Christmas system behind it. No, I think it'll be before then. No, it'll come very close, I think. GFS says that Melor will intensify a little more before landfall and then sort of stall near Manila and just move out to sea slowly, very weak, and that Invest 97 will be a weak tropical storm near Palau by day Five. I have no information beyond day five for GFS. That's a car yeah. there with something through it <laughs> that Jesper was showing on his Skype there. <laughs> yeah, yes. steel pole or whatever it is. Yeah, mm. smashed through the car. Not good. David, how did that happen? Was that a tornado? I haven't got any other information on the uh, tornado scene. Okay, the CMC thinks that Malor will r retain its intensity over the Philippines and then move out over the South China Sea briefly possible? near Manila and then move back in just north of Manila. Oh, and, uh, move going to then do a recurve and southwest and weaken and then right behind it is 97W, which makes landfall and moves through the same area. Yeah, and so that actually, Malor survives and it's a tropical storm again very close to the coast of malaysia malaysia um the uh, borneo Nathan. malaysia well, that's what, what i'm thinking i don't know i yeah, think it yeah. also 
predicted a tropical cyclone in the Arabian Sea, a very weak one, very weak one, and perhaps sudden hemisphere development, mm, maybe something not far from Indonesia. Oh well, if you look at Jesper's screen, there's three storms in the southern Indian there. What's that? Uh, that is week after, um, after Melora has made landfall, it moves south, and just as it moves south, three systems forms and uh, moves slowly to the east. Hmm. And by the way, Melora strengthens again on the. Uh, where is that? Uh, no, it's the. Um, what's that place called? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh. Which place? Where? In the South China, the rest in South China Sea area. Yeah. Yeah, but the place where it makes makes land. Yeah, Vietnam there. Yeah, we have Vietnam. Hmm. And at 2.40 hours south, which is <coughs> no surprise that this won't happen because it's a CMC and it's 240 hours south, but it says three systems uh, will form. What's CMC saying? That's this it. Was, that was the CMC. We can take a look at the GFS, which... Sorry, I, yeah, but... I doubt we'll predict. GFS actually predicts Melora to enter the um, Indian Ocean and. David? In yes? Are you asleep? No, I just. Uh, just a few things going on here in the background, but. <laughs> no, I'll just. Uh, <laughs> I actually want to take a look at the GFS on the Australia because. Just well, north of well, us. Mate. It'll save me. I saw something right there. Right there. I'm just trying to find a link. Where is it? I'm just going to have it load. This see. was 150 hours south, something forms. Okay, now we're looking at the venue R21. Yeah, right there. Do you oh, see that? Hang on, just go back. Right here, at 312 hours of the GFS. It forms a system and then basically a hurricane, I think. Hmm, a cyclone there, yeah. Yeah, and then it, it crosses. It, yeah, and it just. And that's the one that could uh, track over into the southwest uh, Gulf of Carpentaria. But the one I'm looking at, if you go back about four or five frames, I'm looking at the one, that one there. So, oh, we could actually see two. Yeah, that's always. Because at this time. Predicted two. The GFS predicted two cyclones for some time now. And we should uh, mention that what we're looking at, these models do, do change. They get updated, what is it, every six hours? Yes. Now, what um, <coughs> the picture has developed a bit further, we know that the monsoon uh, trough is expected to kick in, and if it drags the uh, cross-equatorial winds into the uh, across the top end of Australia so we've got and uh, we've got the MJO pulse which is supposed to make landfall on the west coast of Australia I think Tuesday and I'm not sure whether it has deepened but we could and I should mention that at this point in uh, this time of year, the systems normally track west to east. So what we're seeing on this model run is possibly two systems, mm. but the Gulf, the Gulf of Carpentaria sea surface temperature is perfect, but now the one that's tracking over Darwin 
from the rest. Now we've got the the Gulf of Carpentaria low, which uh, could track over into the Western Coral Sea region. Now the uh, eight fifty. Millibar. Uh, did, so did, so did you find out what intensity that storm was? No, I'm not sure. If you look at the vortices, it's a really strong one. I am back. Welcome back, Marcel. Yeah, uh, this has been updated obvious. since we last uh, visited yeah. this page, hasn't it? Yeah, this one I can compare to the last run. It looks like this. So this is the 18. Okay, now that's that's looking very interesting. And this this was for six hours ago. And this was the new model run. You can see how is how much is uh, differ between the oh, other yeah. one. A storm here and a storm here. I met the last one, the older one. A stronger storm here and nothing here. So it change. So it looks like the uh, Australian scene is developing. Yeah. But there's nothing on that uh, Vanuatu low. Mm. Yeah, well, that one. Now that that one that was in the Gulf, that can actually track it down, down through central Queensland. I hope that scenario uh, takes place because. That will help those areas that remain in drought. When it comes to the GFS, I think in the southwest Pacific at the moment. Well, 1008 HPA, the Weather Bureau here would class that as a very weak low. But it's expected to drop to 1,005. So it's 11.23 Eastern Standard Time on the east coast of Australia. The uh, Weather Bureau will update their tropical cyclone three-day outlook about uh, 14.45 EST or earlier. So I'm waiting with interest to see whether... Uh, there's any information relating to the low. Yeah. Have another look at Typhoon Malor. Um, it's looking pretty good actually. It's looking very, yeah, very, very good, healthy. Actually. You see the the banding. Yeah, becoming more and more circular. Yes, and um, do we, Nathan? Do we have any information from the Philippines uh, weather people? Oh, just that the signal one warning is in effect for Samar right now. Right. Okay. Oh, there you can see it's the eye on this color. <laughs> a, a pinhole eye at the moment. Yes, it'll be very interesting to see what the uh, Joy Typhoon Warning Center's uh, next update will be. That, uh, I'm looking at uh, how wide the uh, eye will be. Let's another look at the extra and storm. As I mentioned, wave height currently is what twenty feet. Yeah. And we Very can't. Interesting start still, definitely. Yes. And we can't. We'll, we also got it. Uh, with uh, Typhoon Metal, uh, when it 
Uh, makes landfall and it'll probably be tide surge too, or storm surge. Yeah. And here's the invest behind Malur, which might not become a typhoon really, but it can track the same as Malur and we bring even more rain. Well, the what's, the dis uh, what's the distance between Malur and 97W? About 24 hours apart, I think. Uh, what would that work? A bit more than that. Uh, right, so... Although a good distance apart, about... Hmm, maybe... Th three days. 800,000 miles. Not 800,000, 800 or 1,000. Not 800,000. <laughs> we couldn't other. see any interaction between the two. No. Mm. It's, it's, it's rather more interaction with these two. Mm. Than these, you can see the tail here. But yeah, you can see the eye there, Nathan. Yes, this is Force 13 Live. We're here till 2 o'clock. Um, we actually had a little change. Uh, we're going to still go off air tonight, actually. Um, so we're not starting our 24 hour coverage just yet. We're going to do it tomorrow. Um, so starting at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. We will be on air on a 24-7 basis whilst this storm is active. Um, so that's when we're going to start. But so we'll be off air for 9 hours from 2 o'clock till 11. Even clearer you can see the eye there. Becoming more and more clear and opened up. And I will just show a three minute loop again on Typhoon. Yeah, I'm showing that right now actually. You? Oh, never mind then. <laughs> then. Oh, yeah, nice looking Typhoon actually. Not yeah, bad. It is. And I can show a much. I can tell you they're there for minus four there. Minus four. Perhaps you're going down here as well. 34 Fahrenheit at HQ. So that's about two. There's one. Yeah. Oh, it's one, is it? Mm. So yeah. there must be a jump then. Minus it's 34 was one. I know 40 Fahrenheit's five. And then 38's four. So there must be a kind of a jump after that. Minus 2.3 right now. Just up there. So Scotland's colder than you now, Jasper. Yeah. But the coldest part in Sweden is, I think, yeah, obviously in the more northern parts. I'm just gonna take a look at that. Um. It is at Orenjaka with minus 24.3. Any questions for us, by the way, during the stream? Let us know and we'll get back to you. Um, in fact, Texas Chris says. In response to Martinez, the storm just past my area wasn't too bad in Texas there, David. Um, I don't know if you've got any more news coming out of there this evening. Just checking. Hmm. Um, keep you up to date with the latest warnings that are in effect right now. Um, I'll just reiterate everything that is currently in effect in that area. Um, in fact, there are more severe thunderstorm warnings in effect now. So, uh, first of all, we had severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for northwestern Donley County, Gray County, northwestern Wheeler County, and southwestern Hemphill County, and the southern, southern Roberts County. We also have 
more warnings, I think. Though I can't see them on... can't see exactly where just yet. There are severe thunderstorm warnings in effect just west of San Angelo, between San Angelo and Midland. I'm not sure the names of those counties in particular, but there's a severe thunderstorm warning there. Actually, it's for Western Coke, Sterling, Western Tom Green, and Irian counties, I think. Um, or Irian. Um, so, a, a severe th uh, say severe thunderstorms locate along a line extending from Westbrook to Stirling City to Barnhart, moving east at 50 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour wind gusts expected with damage to roofs, siding and trees. Um, no tornado watches or warnings right now. There were tornadoes that touched down earlier today. Some, uh, At least one of them has caused, as far as I saw from ah. the pictures, a significant amount of damage. There's also flooding concerns for eastern parts of Texas with a flash flood warning in effect for several locations. Trying to get exactly where for you right now. Flash flood warnings in effect until 8 o'clock central time for Hopkins, Eastern Hunt, Delta, Van Zandt and Rains counties. Keeping you up to date on the weather. Um, yeah. Dave and da Dayrit says, I think, I live in Southern Luzon. Damn, it's hitting us. I meant my cousin lives in Southern Luzon. Um, yes, the storm is expected to enter that area. Um, the, its intensity by the time it gets there, unknown at this time. But I would say prepare for at least signal two conditions, possibly. Possibly signal three. Uh, this is Force 13 Live. We will continue on the air until at least two o'clock tonight. We may run over. Um, and then we will be back at 11 a.m. starting our 24 hour service, which will be running indefinitely whilst this storm passes through or moves towards the Philippine Islands. Lee, anything you'd like to add right now? Uh, not at the moment, no. Indeed, anyone else? <laughs> uh, interesting weather over in Canada. Winds, uh, it's been reported, winds of uh, 100 miles, 100 kilometre an hour gusts, rain, snow in BC. BC, now what? BC in Canada, what? Uh, British Columbia. Yes, so uh, up to 100 kilometres an hour, wind gusts, rain and snow in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And freezing a drizzle. Oh, goodness. Texas Chris says, great job, guys. Thanks and happy holidays. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Happy holidays it's going to be to very interesting over here in Australia. And uh, happy holidays under the barbecue in Australia. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yes, we're putting David under the barbecue. You're always welcome. You can follow me on Twitter too. Yes. But... Yes. Oh, that was just crazy. That was funny you said that. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, well, well, the Lord well, looks very well, seeing good. how David never gets hot, I thought it'd be okay. <laughs> oh my well, still God. got the jumper on. <coughs> so. Still got the jumper on, 26 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll bring up the temperature. I haven't, haven't had a chance to check the local weather. I'm more interested <laughs> in the tropical scene, but... But the sea, uh, the top end's going to see some fascinating uh, rainfall totals. Anything, anywhere up to 300 millimetres. So what's that uh, equal in uh, inches? Anybody? No idea. you Google. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, that's easy. Uh, oh, what do I want? Okay. What have we got for... 
Okay, David, got a question for you personally here. Um, Ram Turtle says, I've always wondered what Christmas in Australia is like. It's a good question, that time. <laughs> Um, Nathan. Well, Christmas, well, uh, that's where people uh, go to uh, various uh, venues for Christmas lunch. Yep. Uh, some people have a barbecue lunch, a uh, lot of seafood. The uh, seafood outlets will be doing a uh, very well, Christmas is always busy, so for me, I'm having a seafood platter um, with uh, roast pork and a little bit of uh, turkey. But turkey is very expensive, but we'll be getting, uh, I think it's uh, rolled turkey, So, and I'll be doing the cooking. Uh, and uh, I'll do the uh, eggs and the uh, rifle, uh, do the uh, curried eggs. So seafood, barbecues, uh, that's uh, what happens down here. Yeah. yeah. And the local weather for my location Brisbane. Oh, yeah, we've got a bit of storm activity on the radar. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Um, that is interesting. Nathan. Marcel, yes. Yeah, I think that Malora is undergoing rapid intensification. It's certainly going some degree of intensification. Uh, if you didn't hear the news, it is confirmed from ATCF. That the wind, uh, the wind speeds for Malort is now up to 80 miles per hour at a pressure around 970. I'm going to find out what the JMA is saying right now. And forming an I is really going to going to help it Definitely develop even eye. further. I mean, we we were talking about whether whether it was an I or not at the start of the broadcast, and here we are looking at what appears to be uh, an I certainly growing. Nah, 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 how nah, well defined nah. it is. Yeah. I'm just going to take a look at Japan's latest update. Japan have actually gone one better, saying that it's the equivalent of 85 miles per hour at their update. Okay. So, between 80 and 85 we're looking at now, <coughs> and the intensity is increasing. That's Category 1 on the Sapphire Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale, not as strong as Hagapit was um, at landfall. Um, but it is getting that way at the moment. Um, I'm trying to think of a similar, uh, perhaps similar to Mekhala uh, right now in terms of intensity. Uh, but I do think it will surpass that very, very soon at this rate. Yeah, I mean, over here in my uh, uh, location, uh, temperature is 23 Celsius, 74% humidity, southerly winds. Eight uh, knots gusting, ten pressure, Blimey. one thousand and seven eight. Oh, only twenty three so tr degrees, Dave. Only twenty three, mate. Hat and gloves, then, right? And it was at uh, nine o'clock, it was uh, twenty one point seven. Oh my God, that's cold. And it's up to twenty three. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it got down to uh, at one thirty a.m. Uh, or two a.m. nineteen point one. 19.1. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. That's a big log dead. fire. Nathan, Nathan, one moment. I think that the Malaris and Dragon rapid intensification. You said that? Be yes, but because of it's been Hawaii. It's what? Ben Hawaii. Ben Hawaii. Yeah, well, no. can't can't rule that rule that out yet because as it's formed and I it can expand. But since the storm is so small, sure, almost like Danny. <laughs> Although Danny was smaller. Hmm. But forming an eye, 
at barely category 2 strength, that's pretty impressive. Looking good. Yeah. Yes, it's looking good. And I'm gonna take a look at wind shear. See if it has increased around the storm any. No, it doesn't appear so. Actually decreased the last oh. three hours. Nathan, just looking at uh, Typhoon Metal's track, it, it shows that uh, after it comes on land, tracking north, north, west, then doing a west turn, then a direct south turn. Quite possible, yes. Yeah. And is, is that what JTWC say right now? Is it? Uh, let's. Uh, I'll post the link. Uh, if you could screen Nathan. share it, that would be more ideal. Yeah. Uh, if it's a picture. All right. And the GFS also predicts it's I'll, going I'll south. I'll just bring it up. Hang on. I'll just... You can bring it up. Yeah, yeah hang on. Ah, oh, my Skype's playing what up. What was that, Lee? There's nine people currently watching this room. I was just checking how many people were watching. Oh, nice of them. Yes, uh, Jasper, I've posted it to the chat room. Uh, can you bring the link up, mate? Yes, I have it. Oh, there we are. And if you could zoom in on that a little. Sorry, so but my this. Skype's just playing up. I just what? posted a link via my other computer. Yeah. Now that's R A L U K. You can zoom in on in it a little bit, Jasper, if you... Oh, there we are. Control and the mouse wheel. Oh, <laughs> oh that's incredible, that, I just saw. What? See that flooding radar you did? Nice Nearly 6,000 years. Oh, goodness. Didn't even know. Also, also <laughs> on that site, they're that's showing a possible uh... Cat 5. What? what? Uh, don't think so. No, I don't think so. Not I don't a chance. Think so. Which yeah. models are these, by the way? I don't recognize. Oh, I, I know this one. Nevgem. I can't even... Two. I can't GF GF two. Is the, GFS is the... Oh, right. have, have a look at that one. I'll just post that image in the chat room. I think COTC is... one that I might be familiar with, but I'm not sure. See you. And then the black it's one. It's only one, but the consensus... Uh, the black uh, one. It's a GFS. Low uh, range cat free. The the model intensities have been trending downwards though. I'm not sure if that's a wise <coughs> idea because storm intensifying in fact almost as that's high interesting. as the model's saying yeah. it would get. Hmm. No, well the next Next lot of updates will be very interesting, but we know, we know, yes. <laughs> now, what's, I'm just bringing up RAM, let's see what they're saying. Quarter to 2 UTC, this is the latest information on Typhoon Malor. It's got wind speeds of at least 80 miles an hour, JMA say hinting at 85. Um, 
the, the, there are signal one warnings in effect for the island of Samar. I expect those signal uh, those signal warnings are going to become more severe as the storm grows and gets closer. It's currently ju uh, undergoing um, uh, a period of intensification right now. It's the 91st tropical storm that we've seen in 2015 so far. The 51st hurricane and could become the 37th major hurricane which would put it five clear of the previous record in 1992. Uh, David, is that, is that your screen now or is that Jasper? No, that's uh, Jasper's. Yeah, I, I think that is very, very much an outlier. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's just one, but... Maybe that's the 2015 model. The one that blows up every single storm because that seems to have been what's happened this year in many instances but not all and not even yeah the cat's <laughs> firing <laughs> yeah mm. real. clearly um, channel five you gotta, okay, you gotta stick with nice. the, probably the high end of the consensus there really uh, which That's says right. 80 knots well then again no it's already 75 knots so Shan. I'd probably go with the green line there and say minimal cat three at peak um just sort of going in the middle there, being as realistic as possible, to be quite honest. Um, Ram Turtle says, I think Melor will have a wind speed of 105 to 115. Sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. Marcel? And um, what? Did you want to say something? Yes. Yes. Laura is a very good storm. Hmm. Okay, and the JMA, um, there they predict a peak intensity of 115 miles an hour. I might want to point that one out to you as well. So they are predicting a category three with 115 mile an hour winds. Yeah, That's the it. Japanese Meteorological Agency who is saying that. Um, I just want to go back and report the UK weather scene because we do pretty much everything here. Um, there is one severe flood warning in England and Wales and there are 58 flood warnings. I'm going to read these out now as quick as possible. Is that the day? Sorry? Is that right day? Yes, there's one severe flood warning at, at the River Wire at St Michael's South. There are two flood warnings in the Midlands, the River Vernery at Maysbrook and the River Vernery at Melverley. There are 24 flood warnings in the northeast, the River Nid at Hunsingor and Catal, the River Calder at Horbury Junction, the River Eyre at Allerton, Ings, Barnsdale Road and Properties, the River Calder at Wakefield, Fall, Ings and Bellevue, the River Wharf at Bolton Percy, the River Calder at Mirfield, Calderview to Stirnad Lane. The River Calder at Horbury, the Strands, the River Eyre at Esholt and Appley Bridge, the River Eyre at Shipley, the River Calder at Dewsbury, Lodge Farm and Sands Mill. Ah. Woodson Beck at High Burton, the River Eyre at Sovereign Street, the Calls and Clarence Dock, the River Eyre at Neptune Street, British Waterways Car Park, Dean Bottom Dyke and Box Ings Dyke at Kirk Burton, River Air from Kirkstall Forge to wider lane industrial units including Kirkstall Abbey, River Calder at Ravensthorpe, Earby Beck at Earby, River Calder at Brighouse, Nunbank Wood, Wortley, Wortley Beck from the Ring Road by Corn Mill Lodge Hotel to Butt Lane by Farnley Reservoir, Walsden Water at Walston, uh, uh, for more Cockbeck at Stutton, River Ooze at York, St George's Field, River Ooze at York as well, Riverside Properties, and the River Ooze at Neyburn Lock. In northwest, there are 21 other flood warnings. Uh, the River Mercy at Cheadle Wood and Ford Lane. The River Ribble at Waltonley Dale at Preston. River Ribble at Salmsbury, River Calder at Worley, Cold Water at Primat Bridge, River Ribble at Ribchester, uh, Pendle Water at Loamshea, River Calder at Burnley Town Centre, that one sounds pretty serious in a town centre and all that, Twarden Brook at Twarden, um, Pendle Water at Barrowford, River Brun at Burnley, Cold Water at Cotton Tree, Cold Water at Cotton Tree again, oh these 
duplicates here. Pad of water at Lomache. I don't know how to name that, pronounce that one. Lose my words. Cold water at Lenches. Pimlico Brook at Clitheroe. Helifield Beck at Helifield. Keswick Campsite. And English D from Shocklack to Chester. Eleven warnings in Wales. The River Severn at Pool Quay and Trewern. River Vermey at Laminec. River Severn at Abermule and Fron. River Severn at Aberbeacon. River Vermey in the Meaford area. The River Rid Her at Riverside Terrace. River Severn at Dolwyn and Landingham. Diffie Valley. Rivers Mordak, Winyon and the town of Dolgalau. Conway Valley. And Lower Dee Valley from Langollen to the Trevelin Mountains. Hope everyone stays safe out there with all the flooding going on, uh, particularly around Cumbria, where that's been well publicised. But not only there, as there have been problems, it's been elsewhere as well. Now, did you hear those little pauses I was making throughout that broadcast? Yeah. I was trying not to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> the first time it happened, and I just could. <laughs> I was really, I was really on my way out then. Having Butt Lane and Cock Beck right next to each other. Oh my really, god! Uh, I apologize. Uh, so, some of those locations uh, out of this world. <laughs> oh, you're telling me. They're in England. Right, um. Yes! <laughs> Try and keep, uh, keep up with all of it. Oh, funny. Okay, well, uh, not funny if it gets flooded, of course. Um, now, there are the, the severe weather warnings in central Texas that I mentioned before have been cancelled as far as I can tell. Uh, there is still one uh, severe thunderstorm warning. I don't know if I said flood before, but I meant thunderstorm warning. There is still one in effect in the northern part of Texas, I think, around... Cool. Where's that? Northeastern Donley County and southeastern Gray County. I think Martinez just mentioned that. Yes, that's in effect till 8:45 um, Central Time. There is also a severe thunderstorm warning near a particular location. I think in Oklahoma. Or Louisiana, I'm not. Um, yes, there's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect uh, for western Howard County, northwestern Sevier County, central McCurtain County, and north central Red River County in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, respectively. Well, other way around, respectively. And it's uh, so that's a severe thunderstorm warning in those areas, too. And I've got five storm chasers in that area. It's very close to the areas that have flood warnings and flash flood warnings as well, to the southwest of those locations. Uh, if you've got any news for us, so let us know in the last few minutes we have oh. here at HQ. Um, Still a snow warning out for Scotland a as snow well. warning. Yes. All right. Well, uh, Some of that snow becoming rather heavy to one of the, along the higher ground. Above 300 to 400 metres. Now there's severe lightning. Well, I expect some child disruption. Well, uh, anything else that you guys would like to discuss before we finish up here? No, I think uh, we've <coughs> done, we've mm. covered pretty much the scene pretty well. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, um, I think that's it from Force 13 HQ. If you've got any messages for us whilst we're off air, which is only going to be for the next nine hours, um, send us a message on any of our social mediums. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Search Force 13, all in text. Uh, and you can also add me on Skype, add Fool13, FWL13. And you can take a look at the Force 13 website with its tracker on there, force-13.com, and its tracker, which is forward slash tracker. 
Uh, all the links to all of our social mediums and the website are located on the YouTube About page, so uh, you may want to start there. Um, yes, we'll be back at 11 a.m. UTC, that's nine hours from now, with Open Mic, and we'll be running all through the day tomorrow so that you don't miss a thing on Typhoon Malor. Who knows what it may be in the morning. We'll keep you up to date, whatever happens. See you okay. soon. Stay safe out there. Don't get flooded, and don't get hit by a tornado if you can help it. Try to stay safe in the snow as well. And the snow. And the snow. All right. And uh, that guy in Texas, I forgot your name exactly, but happy holidays to you too. If you didn't Chris. Hear me. Chris. Thank you. David's got a better memory than I. Ha, ha, ha.